Welcome back to Game Changers Championship Berlin, where the brackets are heating up as some teams compete for their tournament lives while others fight for that precious grand final spot. Of course, folks, I'm the one and only Golden Boy, and all those other boys, by the way, were just pyrite. I'm joined here by the irreplaceable Ender and Evil Cat. And fa fun fact, by the way, we have done this desk online in NA Challengers so many times, but we're here today, and also Ender is wearing Mithra armor. This is going to be <laughs> a great day. How are you guys feeling today? I'm feeling good. Look, I, I feel really safe. It's just <laughs> chain mail. I can't, I can't, I can't come at you, you know, <laughs> like at all. Which was a concern of mine. You know, I'd never met you in person <laughs> before. <laughs> Sword never fighting know. is a big, a big occupational hazard here. It is. We, we came to find out. But yeah, doing good. What, it, do you know what pirate? What is pirate? Well, I learned today that it, it it's um. Fool's gold? Fool's gold. So the joke is, because you're golden boy, uh -huh. all oh. those other fake guys, they're pyrite. Uh. Yeah. You know, if nothing else, if there's no analysis, at least we can explain the joke. Which That's right. <laughs> That's happen. right. That's right. There will be plenty of tomfoolery here today. God, that was, was terrible delivery. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yesterday we had our fair share of slugfest as we saw Brazil keep their spot in the upper bracket. And we said goodbye to our first two teams at the inaugural Game Changers Championship. Unfortunately, you know, uh, across the board you know we, we, we said goodbye to, to crew we said goodbye to fennel mimi these were uh two teams that brought a lot of personality a lot of energy to the games it was really closely contested battles for both teams yeah it really was this first match in particular came down to the wire i think uh, a lot of people considering crew the clear favorite coming into this matchup but x10 just pulling off some insane moments to stay in this series and, and stay alive in the tournament. Oh yeah, that was such a shock. I think Muffin was just set up to take all these early fights over on Haven and, and they really got things going on that map. At the same time, like I do think Crew really tried to show a lot within this tournament, but at the end of the day, the clutch factor in that turnaround uh, from this X-10 squad has just proven that they are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, absolutely. And now they get to keep fighting in the lower bracket. Fennel, though, unfortunately has been sent home. They brought a a lot of fun, a lot of joy to this tournament. But uh, on the other hand, uh, Guild was not allowing any fun. They were no. des destroyers of fun in this series as they were absolutely dominant in both maps. I've got to say, like, even though they do crush the maps, like, that is not an easy series to play, especially on Haven, because Fennel, it seemed like every time they took a site, they were just pushing into defender spawn, right? Yeah. Festival was crazy, dashing forward on the jet constantly, so credit to Guild to keep it cool mm -hmm. and, and sort of react to those plays on the fly because Festival was challenging them. Yeah, and even if Fennel isn't the, the, the kind of team that was able to keep up with Guild, it's still a very, very hard style to play against. You don't really see any other teams that play like Fennel. So Guild's adaptability and, and their focus throughout that match did impress me. Yeah, and for now, though, unfortunately, and I'm sure it won't be the last time we see them, we say goodbye to those two teams. But today, though, as we focus on the matches at hand, we have three Slobberknocker matches for you all today because we're going to be kicking things off with two more elimination matches as Shopify Rebellion take on X-10 Sapphire and Guild X will be taking on Cloud9 White, the number one seeds from each region fighting up against each other. And then last but certainly not least, we have the upper bracket finals with Team G2 Gozen and Team Liquid. So Mimi, I mean, who do you think is going to be uh, surviving today's matches? First of all, that's already the second wrestling reference of the day. We're on good pace, but nothing. these matchups should be fantastic. <laughs> both NA teams in the lower final. There's a chance if they both win, they face in that lower semi. But for X10 and for Guild, right, you have X10 who's kind of this underdog squad. And you have Guild who's actually the number one EMEA seed now in the lower bracket facing Elam. It's just crazy that we've got to send some of these teams home. It feels like the tournament is just going by so, so quickly that you can play two, three matches and already be out. Yeah, it, wild stuff across the board there. But, guys, we want to know what you think. Join in on the conversation and celebrate the Game Changers teams. Use the hashtag VCT Game Changers and hashtag VCT, and we will feature your tweets on the broadcast. Make sure you get out there now because who knows how long that thing's going to last. <laughs> anyway, though, <laughs> grab your phone and make sure you scan the QR code that's going to be popping up on on the screen or you can also check out Valorant Esports on Twitter to find out uh, who, who will, will be there for the poll excuse me and uh, who's going to get through their elimination match today is it going to be Shopify Rebellion will it be X10 will it be Cloud9 or will it be Guild <sighs> look Golden Boy choices. all I'm saying is you know how you can like read tea leaves and see the future I'm kind of reading the QR code oh, yeah, right I also now. see it in your, in your armor I'm, I'm too I'm feeling good about Cloud9 you know I'm wearing a little <laughs> bit of the blue today as well I don't know it's it's in the leaves I, I don't know if I have the, the same power that you do, Christy, to read that, but I, I 
feel like Cloud Nine's a pretty safe bet. Um, uh, EMEA Believers Guild as well. I mean, they were looking really good yesterday. I don't know if it's enough versus Cloud Nine, but yeah. so, some good options. The matches should be sick. Look, Yinsu's who's not on the desk with us. I was so going to say, can speak our truth. Okay, Yinsu Cloud and Kukuka are in here, so I can at least be <laughs> like, I think Cloud Nine are going to be all right. But anyway, moving on though. Match one has, of course, North America Shopify Rebellion, Rebellion fighting to keep their tournament lives alive here. And you know, this has been a team with quite the journey up until this point, right? And Game Changers, they've always been, the, you know, uh, the, the second place team, never quite getting over that hump. But I do feel like, Ender, we're starting to see some layers to this Shopify team. They get put to the test quite often, and they always seem to meet the occasion. Yeah, they really do. And, you know, even yesterday, it felt like finally they were going to break out, you know, make top three with a big win there. And it's nice to see them coming into the studio. Looks to have some, some high spirits as Salt is shown in KP's hands there. But that was a heartbreaking loss yesterday they got to bounce back from. It really was a difficult one for them to lose. But I think Shopify have already shown us that they are here to be a very competitive team. Their goal of this tournament is escape that shadow of Cloud9. Prove that you're not just second fiddle, that you can be a team to compete at the top level. And staying alive today is going to be very pivotal con to continue to show that goal. Especially since what happened yesterday was so incredibly tragic. Yeah, I mean, and, and oh no! So we have the the seeker incident oh, no. is just absolutely seeker brutal. Gate. Eats all all the bullets, and don't forget earlier in the map too. Uh, Shopify have this round where they've got full rifles and they just full save against a thrifty and then you are somehow forced onto this final map. Bastarda runs them over. Well, you know, the other thing too is that you have to dig yourself out of that hole when you find yourself in that situation, Mimi, right? And yeah. Shopify, I hope that that was a lesson learned because you're on the stage, people watching, cheering you on, lots of people watching at home. You have to find a way to kind of recover that. And I think that's the important thing for Shopify because at home, they have been criticized for the mental in the past. They've had moments where they kind of have become boomed in, in the late stage of tournaments and let matches that shouldn't slip away. And well, I don't think what happened was fully their fault or their mental slipping. Today, they have to completely reset, prove that they've had mm -hmm. that adaptability um, uh, to, to improve and be able to come back today. Yeah, well, let, now let's look though at some of the pillars of the squad here, right? And, and you know, we're gonna be keeping all eyes on Sonder. Are you seeing, look at that, all fit the song Sonder. in there, John Locke. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> like, you know, Sonder has been and are unbelievable uh, oh, yeah. in this in this tournament. And it's especially shocking because Shopify is a team usually all the players are sort of playing on the same level. You don't have those big standouts, but when you come to the international stage, you need that entry yeah. player to pop off. Sonder showed that, especially in the first couple of games yesterday on the raise, which was a new pick, right? Especially moving onto the map of Fracture. She was so strong. Yeah, and well, she did fall off in that third map. It really was more of a team issue than Sonder in particular. If she can replicate this performance from the first few maps, Shopify is on a very good course. The value that she was providing on this raise was absolutely absurd and what's cool about it is it was new comps it was changes that were set up and pretty much fully invested to enable her and you can see why shopify is putting that emphasis on sonder exactly with all the the new comps like you saw the support of kp as well the flashes on the breach always setting sonder up for all those multi -kills. well i'm very glad you mentioned kp here because honestly no one is feeling the sting of that loss on team liquid more than those that are going to be playing in the match today and you know for shopify rebellions kp we actually took some time to get her thoughts about that game. Let's go ahead and take a look. I mean, everyone's feeling like ass, kind of. We literally had that game on bind, and we kind of let it slip through our fingers. It just like kind of crumbled a bit at the end. Maybe they had some better timings today, um, and like respect to them, they had to hit their shots when it mattered most, and they did. There wasn't anything necessarily surprising about Liquid's performance. I like really think we had it and like we lost to ourselves. We know we can make a lower bracket run. Now it's just like, damn, like we lost a life. Like now it's harder. Maxi lost to one with the swing. KP will not let it happen. Nobody at this tournament had us doing anything. There was no expectation for us at this tournament. Um, so it kind of gives us this like underdog card even though we know in our own heads we're not underdogs, like we have one of the most competitive regions. I think Shopify performs best when we're having fun and we just got really eager to close it out today. So as long as we just remember that the game isn't over till it says victory on our screens and we just chill and laugh and like take a breather, I think we'll be absolutely fine.
That is such an important lesson to remember, Mimi. The game is not done until it, it, it's over. You got to play every single map there. You remember, this is KP's first big LAN event as an IGL, and the maturity she is showing with her team, the realization of the mistakes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coming back stronger is really important for this team. I think they have a great mentality and a great understanding of what went wrong yesterday. Yeah, you know, and it sort of feel like uh, felt like especially like KP figured out exactly what they needed on their attacking halves, like right at the end of the half. So I'm hoping that with this learning sort of getting the reads on your opponents that she is able to find that early on because yeah. she had the exact right reads in round 12 and if they're accessing that round 7 round 8 round 9 like this team is a force to be reckoned with yeah, very true very true well hopefully they will find that extra life here today but now it's the na reps that will be facing off against x10 uh, uh sapphire excuse me who ideally will be looking to keep their fire from yesterday's series and you know this x10 team uh, has been very impressive to watch me I, I've enjoyed it top to bottom. They have brought a lot of fire uh, to the field, and that is what you need, especially if you want to take down a weakened Shopify Rebellion. Yeah, a lot of parallels between this team and Shopify, both constantly second fiddle in their region to a dominant squad. For them, it's Alter Ego Celeste, but unlike Shopify, they overcame that team. They made it here, and not only that, they've already won a series. They have that momentum behind them, and the fashion in which they won yesterday was so, so impressive because every single one of their players was finding these insane pop-offs at the very end of the game, even though it seemed like everything was slipping away from them. Yeah, you know, the clutch moments from this team were just absolutely absurd. I think Muffin is a player that absolutely comes to mind that when the going got tough, when you're in those late round moments, she was always finding ways to turn around uh, the game. And we saw a lot of this on Haven where a crew just could not put rounds together, sort of forced in to fighting them right there. Even with a Sheriff in the hand, you get the full stick out of Muffin. One versus four, like what is going on with that? Yeah, and just the vibes of the team were so good. They were out there on the stage, they were smiling, they were having fun. Uh, they realized that, hey, this game looks tough, but it does not matter. Ginny kept the squad focused, and they were able mm -hmm. to come back and win that series. And now it does feel like this squad could push forward and do anything. They've already beaten their expectations. Yeah, and, and you know what, though? You, you got a team that has found hero moments with all five players, which has been great to see. Um, but, you, you know, you actually talk, talked about her. We got to talk about Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite name, Mufine, as I have <laughs> liked to call her. Uh, Muffin has been you know, pretty... Pretty damn good. I mean, these stats, they don't lie. Yeah, you know, it, it was a thing, because I think in her first match, she was a little bit slow, I think, to really get out of the gate and take over. But taking down Crew yesterday, again, you see the ramp up over the course of that series. The longer she stays on the stage, the more comfortable we get, uh, she gets and the stronger she plays. And that's what makes X10 so scary coming into this match. They've had that warm-up time. They've shooken off those nerves. Uh, and now for this series, if they can come in and match what they were able to perform with in that final map it could be insane muffin as an individual player her style is really quite ridiculous it is so many of these rounds where she is just running in first making these super chaotic plays but also then getting herself in these late round positions where she is winning so many clutches uh, it's just a very tough player individually to deal with oh yeah you know like she's a strong she's a solid opera but i think when she's on like something like the neons or that heat up agent yeah, where yeah. you can just sort of snowball your way through a round that's really where she it, it looks so impressive to me and one of the big reasons why I think their Haven looked so dominant up against Crew. Yeah, yeah. It, that that kind of speed and momentum is going to be very pivotal, I think, for this XN uh, Sapphire team. You know, don't take your foot off the gas. Keep on going, and you will find success. But let's uh, actually go ahead and check the results of the poll that we asked you guys earlier on, like who you thought was going okay. to survive today's elimination <laughs> matches. And that is... Uh, <laughs> resounding cloud well, nine white the, the people online they read the qr code tea leaves ah. okay <laughs> they know it's not the analysis anything although that would also probably tell you cloud nine white uh but yeah you know they can just see it they can sense it in the air guild number two though i don't know if that's mathematically how that can work out but some believers yeah this is gonna be a wild day and i'm so excited for it. we've got the stage ready and pretty much all that is left to do is to get things started so folks game changers championship Day four is going to be kicking off right now.
For an international event, the competition is definitely a lot higher. While I do think that we underestimated you two a little bit, I think we also kind of outplayed ourselves in some ways. I'm fully confident in our lower bracket run. I fully expect to be in grand finals and take the win. Almost spotted! The sky you oh. me out! Powerful no! We still have so much to prove. Doesn't mean we just won against C9 and we won the whole tournament. Really good for G2 to be able to win this round. This is not a training, this is a campeonat, this is a presencial. As meninas são muito boas e eu sei que meu time também. I think Team Liquid is decent. They still have a lot to prove in this tournament. Se eles não acreditam no Brasil, não acreditaram nos meninos da Loud e olha o que aconteceu. And we already know we will make it to the grand finals and we're gonna win it. Esperem um bom jogo porque a gente estará lá. But it's on the floor, Naxi! Honestly, to the teams in the lower bracket, get ready. Shopify, Fun Belly, and coming back. We ain't Finma drop that lead this time. Team SR, na ha, ten team tidi. Kid wa, lao ka na ja dai bap lian lu piti kan leng hong kao lo. Tae lao me na ja pae ka. Kid wa, ta den pan ka tai na. Our biggest strength is basically. Hey Cloud9, I think it's gonna be rainy tomorrow, so better watch out. Every team should be ready and we will steamroll anyone who plays us next. to go as we jump into our map vetoes here. Let's see where we're going to be playing at for this Shopify Funbellion versus X10 Sapphire battle here, Mimi. I think what's going to be really interesting about these vetoes is Shopify's new comps. They debuted two completely new compositions yesterday, and of your X10, the question is, are there going to be any more changes? What can you actually safely prep for? I think it's really hard to have that prep outside of the, the couple games they ended up playing yesterday. XN decide uh, to move over to Haven, which looked real solid for them up against Crew. But I got to say, overall, I'm a big fan of the new look we saw from Shopify, even in the series loss. Those new comps with the Rays were sick. Yeah, and I think we'll likely get that Sonder Rays over on Haven. For X10, that is their home ground. They should feel pretty comfortable out on Haven. Shopify do send us to Pearl. This is a map they were fantastic on regionally. Mm -hmm. They've shown uh, here at the international event as well and uh, in their game against guild x i mean they were looking pretty darn good yeah i think uh pearl's an interesting one here because i think the way sort of shopify played around i think their mid-round calling has looked very good uh throughout this apart from maybe the the longer saves over on vine so i think that's a map where you could definitely try to break your opponent's ankles and might prove challenging for x10 yeah, Fracture is what we'll get out of the Decider here. Uh, another one where Shopify has played, where they debuted us, that Ray Sage composition in the head-to-head -head, um, up against Team Liquid Brazil. Uh, honestly, if I'm looking at this pool, I feel like this is quite favorable for Shopify. I think those maps where you can get those new comps, where you can get Sonder out on the Rays, are going to be really successful. But... Haven could be flippy. It's so sure. comfortable for X10. 100%. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I think if this does go to a third map, like 
I loved Shopify's Fracture so much that I think they're going to be taking the series away. So we need to see X10 come out very strong right off the rip. Yeah, yeah, and and that has uh, historically been an issue for them, being able to start out strong from the beginning. So they're going to have to, you know, button that up. But for us, though, we're going to be taking a quick commercial break because when we come back, we're going to have Shopify Rebellion and X10 Sapphire take the stage. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you as always on the other side. Welcome back, everyone, to Game Changers Berlin, where the stakes of the next match are pretty simple. Win, and your dream of earning the championship stays alive. Lose, and you go home. Please welcome Shopify Rebellion and X10 Sapphire to the stage. Tell you as a Puerto Rican guy from the from the Bronx, Sonder, I respect the tap up. All right, good, <laughs> that was job. A good one. Next time I see her, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go for the tap up. I gotta test it out because Mimi's in shambles over here. I, I tried really hard to learn. <laughs> I want to run up to KP and go for the KO ult. Yeah, yeah. I would just. 
<laughs> that was so Start good. Start miming out all the abilities. I love it. Also, it's just so freaking wholesome, okay? And that's exactly what it's all about. You know, coming together, you know, like enjoying the, the spirit of competition, but most importantly as well, right? You know, you kind of have to throw the, the niceties to the side a bit yeah. because now it's time to play. I was going to say, it's all wholesome until round one starts, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's an absolute bloodbath, uh, you know, racing towards the finish, trying to stay uh, alive because this is for your tournament life here. Yeah, and for round one, that is where X10 needs to start. They cannot afford another slow start into a series nope. with this map pool and against a team like Shopify, who gets so incredibly good in those late rounds. Yeah, it really does feel like a tale of two completely different teams. A, a, a team like X10 that ramps up, but a team like Shopify that already starts at a 10 and sometimes can be brought down to a one, depending on, you know, circumstances and cabbages, you know? <laughs> so it, this is something that, you know, you really have to be mindful of if you're X10, and I am genuinely worried about them. If they don't win this Haven game, I am concerned about their chances in the series. 100%. Pearl going to be a tough one. Large map right there. I think on Haven, it feels definitely a little bit more comfortable for them getting Muffin, especially on that Neon, into, you know, forward positions very early on in rounds. And also, you know, they've been playing the sky on this map, so you can deal some serious mental damage to Shopify. Oh, it's, not oh, even that it's not even about the kit, it's just about the mental. <laughs> Traumatic experience. Oh. Oh, from last goodness night. gracious. Oh, no. The but first time they hear Seek Him Out, it's over. It's done, yeah. But it, what makes this first map interesting is both these teams have been playing the no information initiator compositions. No Fade, no Sova. They've both been going for, for the Sky as their primary initiator instead, which has gotten pretty uncommon. And I'm also surprised by, especially after those Sky changes. Yeah, there's still some like information you get right with the dog. Sure. You feel like A short usually on attack. Uh, you know, the KO knife can give you some, but it's not the same thing as having a knife or an eyeball pop back sight, especially working towards C or A. It clears so much info on the site itself. All right, well, let's see what agents we're going to end up getting here as it's time for the Prime Gaming Agent Select, Mimi. If we do head back to those comps, I also think it, it does kind of force a little bit of a different identity to the map. You can't really rely on those Cease and Aid combos for early control. I, instead, for the side of X10, it's about leveraging that Astro utility when they're on their defense. And the same for Shopify if they do head back to that comp. Yeah, definitely so. Shopify did very narrowly uh, fall, I believe, their first time playing this one here. So not expecting too many changes, although as I say that, the Breach does come in, which I do like a lot. So much power in setting up your raise with a pick like that. And uh, yes, you do lose the Sage, but I don't think she carries as much value on Haven compared to other I think we're still seeing this identity of Shopify be focused as much as possible on enabling Sondra. This is pretty much the same thing as their bind comp, where they have those two initiators to set her up. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and there you utility yesterday to set up Sonder was perfect. It has to be Muffin versus Sonder. Muffin needs to start strong here. All right, well, let's see how this all pans out and get ready to send it over to our casters. It's Pots and Vans. Does that work? Does that work? I think that works. Maybe, I, maybe it might work. I, I just got a fist bump coming from the screen, so we'll take it back. But thank you, GB and Enmi. This is actually a matchup right now, Christine, that you have to put everything on the line. No more secrets, no more secret chats. If you want to move later into this tournament, you have to put it all on the line right now. And I think the desk makes perfect sense. If X10 wants a chance in this series, they have to win this map. Yeah, exactly. And perfect timing, right? Because historically, we think back to Shopify. They've had the slower starts. I'm looking straight at K. The desk was mentioning the breach, the new comp. Mimi mentioned uh, that yesterday there was a lot of unknowns. Today, we know what to expect. They're looking straight at Sonder. They want to set her up for success, have her thrive in those chaotic moments. So we'll see. And look at that, Benz. A frenzy. You'll love to see it. A frenzy on Sonder's back. We'll see exactly what she's wanting to do. It does look like Shopify. They're very congregated towards the C and garage area. Yeah, on the other end too, BBTC has her own frenzy as well. And we'll have to keep in mind about that matchup that Mimi was talking about, that Muffin and Sonder. What's going to happen in KP with this breach? How much value is this going to bring into the series? As right now for X10 on the pistol round are starting in the attack and a very quick hit onto C. Something different from their game before. And the first blood is that frenzy. Make that enough a second in favor of X10 as the spike goes down on the C site. Yeah, two members just already dead. Not a lick of damage. A lot of util still here left up for X10. This paint shells has got to do a lot in combo. Oh, and it just gets taken out. That's going to be a flash nade. That's going to do a bit of damage Beautiful. here. It's a nice breach bolt line as we oh. push back out. But the crossfire is still very good for X10 as they get the pistol round versus Shopify. There was a moment, Vans. Look at the damage done. So Alyssa much. barely just so limping much. across. 
I like the combo coming through here for Sonder and KP. Absolutely valiant efforts, but man, Flowerful didn't even get a lick of damage before. She was yeah. just so blind. Beautiful utility coming out here for X10. And again, so decisive. And you love to see it to start out round one on pistol to come out with this much confidence if you're X10. Oh, yeah. And even look at the positioning of that coming out. One of them wasn't hit by that fault line. And it's that investment of the frenzy that actually helped X10 to get the first kill and the last into the round. So good job here for BBTZ. A gun run coming in for X10 into this one here. And you're looking on the side of SR. A full save, a shorty in the hands of Padina, and are actually gambling for these stacks because, again, we want to talk about yesterday's game. X10 has hit that ace site quite a few times. They have, they have. And, you know, as they should, right? <laughs> they had so much success with yes. this slow default. Very calculated. And Correct. SR looks like they're reading this round pretty Pretty well, and of course, Bonita's got that shorty in hand. These shotguns for the side of Shopify have been pretty deadly all week long, so X10 fully aware of this. I'd be surprised if they even go sniffing. Oh, and Alyssa does. She's got the spike. This could get dangerous. Exactly. Let's use some utility. So it's going to be the Trailblazer, fault line combo. Oh, trying to push no! forward! But Alyssa's going to be able to get that kill. The nades come down to get a couple. Oh. And Lori goes with the right click classic to get the kill into the A site. We're still converging into here. We're committing into the site for X10. And finally, as we dwindle down in numbers, back to a two versus two, we tuck tail and try to move back and rotate all over towards the C site. Not a single bit of utility left for Shopify, but they're just going to stick in numbers. And X10, they haven't slowed down. They're just booking it. They realize they've got to catch up. I'll be interested to see if they plant for the spawn side or if they plant for Long C and they do choose to decide to take over this spawn area. Ten seconds really left. important to solidify this post plant here. That is actually great awareness from X10. They still had that trap wire, or should I say, the trademark to watch the flank. So they plant for a spawn, knowing that it now gets broken. There's at least one flanking for Shopify Rebellion. With the flash coming out, there's information. There was still a star to delay from Polly as the two players from Lauren and KP from Shopify have picked up weapons. The first contact in favor of BBTZ and not even need it for the swing from Pauly. BBTZ holds it down for the second round. Good recovery. A very much needed recovery for X10. It would have been absolutely devastating to lose out this eco to just four classics and one shorty. Beautiful work for Shopify. Absolutely, you're satisfied if yep. you're on, the, on that side of things. And if you're X10, you're coming into this bonus with a lot less money, a lot of decisions to make. Uh, these bonuses are so tough, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone's money is just all out of whack. We'll see if X10 decide to invest heavily and fully into it. And they don't. It will be a pure bonus. Couple of stingers, so going with these half buys for those that actually lost their weapons on the second round in the favor uh, in the corner of X10 rather. Knife and Trailblazer to clear out towards Garage. This is going to be a fast C hit. Flowerful trying to spray through the wall that was set up by Muffin. As X10 are still moving inside the side. Yeah, a little bit of delay with the flashes coming through, but it seems like the plan's going to be quite easy. Yeah, this is going to be a full five on five retake. There's going to be so much utility coming through. Sky setting up Saunder to retake this garage control and power positions here for X10. This fault line is going to be everything for Shopify. Utility is getting broken, so there's no information really coming out from Shopify Rebellion. You already see KP setting up for that fault line. It's a fault line flash, Nate as well, just to clear out for default. The oh, crossfire no! is still really good. And who again than BBTC? And everybody's dropping like flies for Shopify Rebellion. Benita by herself, and Benita's going to join everybody else as a beautiful bonus round. Pulse plan for X10 comes in their favor. The Stingers, the Stingers, Vans. Close it range, Woo. it's so strong. And X10 absolutely capitalized. Perfect positioning to be able to utilize that weaponry. And man, again, Shopify, they had the utility to be able to so make close. space and get in. But it seems like X10, they are just so decisive in getting into the C site. The next time around, Shopify, they're going to have to put up a much better defense and not give up this site. Yeah. And the idea was uh, was great for Shopify, knowing that there was a lower buy for X10, that they were going to play inside the site. They did try to use a lot of utility to try to clear that out. But... Again, it's just a further position just on the edges of Long C that really helps out X10 in these pulse plan situations. And around, once again, 124 left on the clock where it's that signature move here for X10. Just wait and spawn for a bit. Try to catch your opponents off guard. BBTZ is going to be one that's going to be jump peeking towards mid. But there's no pressure coming out from Shopify.
This time around, X10 does not want to mess around with that A main area. Bonita took this timing to go ahead and get a lot of space. The Machera, oh. oh, not good for it. Just gets taken out and X10, they've been decisive when getting into the C site. Bot line is really timing. good. Yeah, nice by KP, but it gets immediately traded out. So worst comes to worst, we still get into the site for X10 and a plant. Still have a weapon uh, advantage where we can salvage the rifle that was left behind. Ollie's going to watch that flank. Gets traded out. And Lori, when she picks up this weapon, it's only a marshal for now. And it's not going to come into fruition for any kills. Another nice round for X10 as they're taking a lead by four. This, to me, Christine, is unexpected, to be honest. It's a very slow start for Shopify. It's something we've been seeing all week long. They've absolutely got to dig deep here. The ultimates are coming online right in the nick of time for Lori and Sonder. A lot of stopping power for that side, and they're going to need it. Look at Ginny. KO ultimate online. That, that yeah. usually means one thing, Vans. They're going to want to exec, and X10 has shown us they're not shying they away from just <laughs> going into those sites here. Yeah, and even the one away from BBTZ and Alyssa. Maybe an opportunity to try to go for orbs if they want to use seekers of their own, but at least for the beginning of this round, it's going to stay slow a bit. A little bit of a change from Shopify Rebellion, yeah. though. Yeah, I like this aggression. Saunders, she doesn't want to just sit around and wait any longer. Going sniffing down in mid, that bird, that info coming out from Alyssa is going to allow X10 to understand that something funky is going on in this <laughs> mid. They don't want to mess with it quite yet. And it does seem like X10 are leaning into that slower, more methodical default to start things off here. Sandra, man, if she gets that one clean kill, reacts immediately with a showstopper. And that's the crazy part. The Trailblazer came out to get for information for, from Lori, and they spot players in spawn. That's just the regular stuff that X10 do. They get no new information out of that. And there's that KO ultimate that you're talking about. The Null Command coming out from Ginny, and the full exec from X10 into an open A site. But this change that you have for Shopify Rebellion, this is one of those moments where it could work really, really well for the retake. Absolutely. This A retake should look a lot cleaner than it has over at C. That fault line coming out from KP this time in tandem with the Showstopper should result in some frags. They're getting ready as well for Nades. Seekers, Showstopper is about to come out from heaven too. The Nades got to contact onto Alyssa. That's the combination with KP. Ooh. And the rocket lands on too. Only one more to go, and that's Polly. And a prime gimme full is coming up from Shopify Rebellion. We talked about clean, and that's how you want to start things off for your first round for Shopify. Exactly. Not only is it a feel good round, you get some money in the bank as well. You start to cheer each other on, and that's exactly what Shopify needed to regain their composure. For X10 side of things, it's a fair trade. It's a fair trade getting into the side and you're telling each other, hey, they used two ults, guys. Good job, we got the spike down. And to boot, they've got three ultimates coming online as well to just respond right after here in round seven. But the Prime Gaming Fall is allows that economy to get built up for Shopify for Rebellion as well, so they can go into full utility, full rifles, and also a cycled ultimate. This time, KP ready with a Rolling Thunder. Another opportunity for them to play a retake site play. for Let's a next play. 10 team that continuously hits this A site right now. Some more aggression coming out for Shopify. Sonder, love her positioning here, tucked. KP is quite far away, but that fault line should be able to reach in that yes. free front B site. And the short A. That's a great call, actually, because that's where all the at with the nades. What a pick! Flash catches information towards long two, but as that pick falls down from Pauly, that's that means that there's no smokes to try to execute towards the A side, so heaven could be easier for the defenders to pick off. So X10 will choose to cut noise, pull back, and see how they want to retake this opportunity in this oh. light. This reaggression short A so dangerous. Baby TZ absolutely ready for that one. Saunders is in such a ready oh. spot. Oh, just punished. Almost felt like it hit the pinky. But that said, Saunders stuck inside sewers. Here's that pinch. Rolling Thunder a little bit too late to save her opponents from KP. Now the flash comes out. KP wants to be aggressive. She wants to make a play. Wow. But it only blinds one player. Only one left with Benita on the rotate. Unfortunately, couldn't come in to help and support KP. And that's X10 that fights back. Yeah, slightly late to the trigger is KP. She absolutely wanted to show up just a couple of seconds later. But we mentioned it, right? She was yeah. more towards that garage earlier than later, so 
Shopify, oh, what a shot coming out here for Baby TZ, though. X10 were absolutely aware of that reaggress. We've seen Shopify doing it two times now in this first half, and Baby TZ absolutely capitalizing. With that, with that pick from that sky on on sewers, she kind of wish she cut her nails that that day because <laughs> that that hit the fingertip for that pick. It certainly did, certainly did, and X10 back towards this garage control very early this time. Changing up the pace. This yeah. is looking very much like that pistol. Exactly. Going into the KO knife to the Trailblazer. But there's no opposition in the backside. There's only Bonita. Ooh. And that's just beautiful relay bolts coming out from Muffin 2. That just stumbles any type of defense, any type of holds, any type of anchoring that you're trying to do for Shopify Rebellion. But we're trying to change the pace for the retakes. We're going in quick. Cosmic Divide's already out. Flash is already through. But unfortunately, oh. caught with the utility in their hands. Muffin lands with two. And never but just drops once again for Shopify. Muffin is having a lot of fun in the server right now, man. <laughs> she did not let go of W from the moment she went into Garage. And, and that's what we're seeing so far from X10. They're so decisive. And another C hit that completely catches Shopify Rebellion off guard. They're gonna need an answer and they're gonna need it now. They haven't had any sort of a defense here yeah. on this C site from pistol up until now. And now it seems as though this is gonna potentially even force a timeout. I think it'll be a great great moment to call it here for Shopify Rebellion. And you're playing this, this game for X10 where it's like, oh, we're gonna try to go really quickly towards the A site, then play the slow default. I talked about this, about trying to mix things up for X10 to hit these sites. And now it just keeps Shopify Rebellion guessing all the time. Yes. There's no real answer to it so far. Yes, and that's such a good point because we just saw it in action. Perfectly done, conditioned from round one till now. Yeah. We're slowing it down. You mentioned that anti-eco, the default. Very slow, punishing any sort of pushes. Then that quick change of pace, really catching Shopify off guard. Yeah, and we just saw a glimpse there of Rob Wiz, legend in the scene in a tactical FPS and even even back then uh, in like the early days of competitive gaming, putting in, trying to figure out what X10 has been doing and maybe find a way where we could maybe punish this slow default towards spawn when X10 wants to use that in their in their book. Yeah, and we saw Benita pushing down with that sheriff exactly. on that eco exactly. route. Maybe here they're gonna wanna try to insert the chamber, insert the Astra into that long seat cubby, get a little bit more forward duels instead of these backwards on the XX. But we'll see how Shopify decide to adjust here, they're broke. Just a couple stingers, a couple upgraded pistols, and for X10, fully aware of the money, they're gonna be calculated here. Oh! oh a rare miss. A rare miss from Flowerful, and the idea was there, the fault line to put in position and to potentially get a pick out in the open. But already that makes the call for X10 to just rush into the A site. A couple of pistols are coming to work in this mixed buy that we have for Shopify Rebellion. But that's just going to stop the bleeding from there. Muffin continuing her reign in these heavy hits on either A or C. And if it's not on her, it's also BBTZ that's able to do a great job. And unfortunately here, Benita in another situation where he's uh, she's by herself, excuse me, and she's going to try to go for at least salvage a weapon, do some econ damage. But the money is looking really good for X10 as well. They are balling. <laughs> absolutely balling. Muffin playing this absolutely disciplined. They shouldn't give Bonita any chance here. Okay, <laughs> all good. She does get taken out. And another decisive, decisive execute coming oh, yeah. out here for X10. Shopify, that timeout was exactly for this gun round coming in. It almost feels like it's like a green light for X10. Get a pick onto the A side. Usually there's like two players there. They know they're gonna play the numbers advantage uh, on like a 4v1. If it's a C site, it's a split. There's an anchor so far from Shopify Rebellion with only one player. They're never hitting B because it seems as though they're just comfortably winning their duels on top of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they, it seems like X10 can do whatever they want exactly. at this point. Muffin yeah. is just choosing whichever way she wants that utility flowerful. Wants a second chance at this duel. Has an operator in hand and oh, Oof. both chambers barely just missing. Wall bang though, that actually did hit Flowerful, but thankfully Lori's there to save her with a little bit of a heal. And same thing onto BBTZ actually. Both of them actually did get the wall bang. Nice little, uh, at least a little bit of damage. Yeah. And X10. At least they're not going A eight times in a row, <laughs> but it does seem like X10 really are favoring this A side. Oh yeah. A lot of A main control, and even take a look at Shopify. Because of that, the chamber trip isn't even 
There's three defenders at A site along with yes. the chamber trip. And look at the second guessing here from Shopify Rebellion. Nobody's pushing down the gate cold here, Christine. They don't know if they have to rotate back to support, do a quicker rotate. And you're forfeited garage. You're forfeited C site. Yeah, and Lori, she just sent that bird down long A. No information was seen. So you can see some movements coming out. And look at that C site. It's completely open. Not a single defender on there. 30 seconds left. That's the full utility. All four stars put read. down here from Polly. We disrupt the site. We have the gravity wells in the back. The concuss towards the logs. And then it's going to be free for X10. These posts have been so brutal for Shopify. These retakes haven't even been close. This time around, not a single ultimate available. They've got to get these frags. No command activated as soon as the aftershock the came out from KP. And indeed, Benita does get the headshot into BBTZ. So at least the flankers is taken care of. But Paulie and Alyssa inside the site. Answered back by Flowerful. Looking for another shot. Not going to work. Now it's Benita once again. <laughs> Stop by Polly. And the Null Command just did not allow any of the utility from Shopify Rebellion for the retake. This time it was closer. Yes, this time agreed, there agreed. was movements. At least Shopify were able to actually get close into this, that site. And it was all thanks to the flank coming out for Bonita this time. At least some map movements coming out across on the defense. We said they needed that info. They got it. And it was closer this time around. But man, X10, they are completely dominating this first half so far. Is there any type of silver lining here? Usually we're looking at, you know, my regular ranked games. It's usually attacker side, but I mean, just in terms of the chemistry that we have for X10, it's just too clean. And we'll just talk about the action right away. Benina finally gets first blood for the team for Shopify Rebellion, and that forces now X10 to fall back. This was a full stack from Shopify with this eco that they had. Yeah, it looks like Baby TZ doesn't want to just give up this frag quite yet, Benita. Beautiful smoke to allow her to recross here. Yeah. They want to save the, uh, not allow oh, Shopify Sonder. Rebellion to pick up the Vandal. She wants it, though. <laughs> we'll see who's more patient. Oh. oh! Just got spotted here, and that allows, look at that, the repositioning Ew. of X10 to slowly move back up towards this C site. But this push, finally, we're talking about it. It might go along that they could get the backstab, but there's still this trademark that's going to be able to watch the flank. Yeah. Sauna ready with the shorty just around the corner and a showstopper as well. As soon as Lori realizes there's nothing behind, oh boy. This is so tense. The little barrel just barely showing through, but the fault line is huge. Flank's about to come around though, and it's being watched. What great awareness by BBTZ. A flash coming out from Garage. So they know that Lori's there, but she lands the headshot. Polly, now. By herself, long range, flowerful, connects with the headhunter, and finally a round that, that, a round that comes in for Shopify Rebellion off a lower buy. And that was off the back of actually fighting for the C site, right? Look, yes. it took three defenders to actually do it, <laughs> but you only had pistols. And we're seeing Shopify this time. They took the duels, it was long range, but they were at least shooting their guns back. So <laughs> uh, a, a beautiful thrifty, and it couldn't have come at a more perfect time, right? Yep. I mean, this half was absolutely starting to get out of hand. We'll see if Shopify are able to string things together, because whenever Muffin has that Neon Ultimate online, X10 are very aggressive. And I just love the fact that X10 on that round decided to play contact to move up towards the seaside instead. Most of their hits in terms of these later rounds have been, hey, let's use utility, where KP was ready for a fault line. They had a showstopper around the corner from Saunder that could probably pick a lot into long C. And now this allows Shopify Rebellion to carry it over into this next round, where X10, well, look at that. Same thing, trying to see if they could punish some players pushing aggressively out from Shopify Rebellion. Alyssa threw a bird out mid. See if Saunders was going to come down sniffing again. They were able to re-clear it, so that just signifies that they can slow this down once again. Mm -hmm. And all that timing, X10, they lost this line of sight in A main, so they've got to re-clear everything, expend some utility. These sound cues should alert Shopify. And from one small change and a little bit of utility from the Seekers that pushes the Opera from Powerful down towards Long C. Will we commit though towards oh. the A side for X10? Big nade, big damage. Trying to come in what with a, a showstopper, but KP with two kills holding towards the sewers. That with the spike down is on a five versus two in favor of Shopify. Nice little swing out here from Pauly. Answered back by BBTZ on to Benita. 
She's by her lonesome, unfortunately, overpowered and overwhelmed by utility. And that's finally a third round in for Shopify. And that's finally Last us seeing the Shopify Rebellion absolutely capitalizing and being rewarded for those set plays, those set pieces. The utility finally paying off hugely for Back KP specifically. A. I mean, so many times we've seen her using that fault line, using these flashes in combination with that paint shell. And it was just so close, but no cigar. This time around, in this A defense, paying off in dividends. So this time the timeout coming out on the other end here, Christine. So for X10, I mean, they've had control of the uh, of the whole first half, but now you're starting to see, as you mentioned, Shopify Rebellion starting to fight back a bit. So maybe that grasp isn't as tight anymore into this lead. Well, they, they want to secure this last. So I do appreciate the timeout coming into it. It, it seems like they're fast. That pistol C split, yeah. uh, they haven't lost. It looked so easy, so clean. So maybe they want to throw some mind games in and throw a quick fake, but make it look like that pistol. <laughs> There's a lot of options yes. for X10. This whole half, they've been conditioning Shopify. So right now, the coach, he's probably having a lot of fun thinking about whatever theory crafting he wants to do. <laughs> I agree with that, Ashley. Maybe a fake from the Seekers to try to hit towards the other side of the sites. Or I also like, at least from Shopify Rebellion from that previous round, you mentioned a little bit of a repositioning from the chamber instead of playing towards A, pushing up towards C. And Firefall was all the way down towards that bottom C where you don't have too much utility coming out from X10 to try to re-clear that area. So maybe we got to figure that out too when it comes to these hits. How do you want to re-hit re towards the C site? But I don't know if we're sitting towards spawn right now or because of all of these ultimates that we have for X10, will we try to go towards B? We'll see if Baby TZ does a little bit more than just slow peeking into this mid this time. And Sondra is right there on the other side of things. Beautiful shot from Flowerful. Oh. There's a trade. Answered trade. right back. One TP to way of four versus four Seekers immediately out. And it seems to be committed for a bit into this C split, but the Rolling Thunder comes out from KP just to slow things down for a bit. And that also puts X10 back at their feet, planting their feet on the ground towards mid and trying to reassess the map. You can see KP really wanted to capitalize off that ultimate that she threw in mid maybe the communications were that the b players also push but it. regardless it doesn't work out and x10 they're making this oh. a site hit happen look at this blink coming through for Ginny. exactly the call from Ginny to tell the whole team to rotate towards the a site the wall comes up from cosmic oh. for the head but flowerful too aware turns back towards the a link and gets the pick onto Ginny. meanwhile though look at that we actually did have a smoke onto the trademark so we might not know that we have two flankers from yeah, shopify yeah. rebellion on this retake polly's holding it towards sewers on the top the rolling uh shut to the fault line comes out but polly gets the first kill two other players pushing in towards spawn for the retake a three oh. Versus two. Oh, no. Alyssa lines up two, but it's a 1v1. Alyssa in the back of the site, looking to get the third into the round. And the last frag for the win in the half. And oh. it's going to happen. She gets it. And X10 put nine into the half. That was so close for Benita. This time, the double flanks, they split up. I was questioning it, Vans. Yeah. But either way, Benita almost is able to convert. But what a statement coming out here for X10 in the first half. Yeah, and that's the crazy part, too. When it comes down to... Players actually losing the flanks. I mean, they're always aware here for X10, but you always have big fraggers into not only Muffin for the whole half, but Alyssa had those moments. Yeah, she maybe hasn't been fragging as much, right? She's currently 5 8 and 5, but also playing a Sky to assist her teammates to enable Muffin to get these kills. But she did a great job here. But with that, I mean, it's a 9 3 curse, maybe. Let's see what the desk has to say. Has it been domination from X10 so far, GB? Uh, you know, from my point of view, I think it has been Vansilly. X10 look absolutely stunning in this first half, Mimi. It's fantastic work out of them. Shopify came in with a new composition. They changed things up. No more Sage. They should be fantastic on these retakes, but Despite that, consistently X10 was getting into the site, getting these spikes down, and, and winning in fantastic post plants. Their positioning on the post plant was just so good, and it starts in this bonus round, right? They're able to convert it, and the positioning of their players, it's like they're playing with seven players on this site. Notice this, th four players can see the players leaving towards CT, and three with Alyssa's positioning to the left side of default can swing off of Garage, you have three players there. So it's literally like you have a two-player numbers advantage. It's insane, and it just meant that Shop 
Shopify could do nothing. Yeah, and this is against the rifles of Shopify. On top of that, you had your Astro player towards long, holding down that flank until she realized, hey, there's no more timing possible. So comes to the site, and it's every single member of X10 there to hold down. Excellent work out of them in their post points, but Shopify did show some life. Yeah, that's right, they did. Uh, and, and it's nice to see them try and bring it back in. You, you made a great point, like KP, she figures it out right at the end, but it's like a little bit, it, you want to get that a little bit earlier. And the problem is that you have players like Muffin that cause those problems for them to have to figure it out. Yeah, that's the thing. KP started to figure it out at the end, but the individual players for XN were just performing so well. That was a fantastic half out of Muffin. Muffin was looking insane, just again on that snowball agent flying forward with the team. The support was there as well. And as we look towards the second half, it has to be Muffin again for X10. Both her and Baby TZ have been taking over in this game, but similar to how Shopify invests in Saunder, X10 invests in Muffin to make these forward plays and get them the space on that defense. Yeah, but now we're going to be flipping sides over here, so let's see what Shopify Shopify decides to cook up because Ender at this point, like you have to be concerned about Rebellion here. Look, K uh, KP has to come out with a good idea to kick things off mm -hmm. on the attacking side. It looked a little bit stagnant for a few rounds just yesterday. They've got to get creative and they've got to unlock it fast. This is Saunders' side though. This is where she has two initiators to set her up. She was great here on by Let's comp. see what she can do here on defense of Haven. Couldn't agree more, team. All right, well, let's go ahead and send it back over to the casters and see how this next half is going to unfold. Thank you so much to our friends at the desk, and yeah, I am actually questioning that as well. Muffin has been a star player for X10 on this first half, Christine, and will this be an impact on how they're playing the defense? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. She should not She should just pick up right where she left off, right? Absolutely. <laughs> on one right now, and for Muffin on that Neon defense, you know, you usually don't think of a Neon being a good defense agent, but specifically on Haven, you're going to want to see her in this forward position, controlling this A main. Those stuns in this little room are so so strong, and you're seeing that happen right now. Muff, Muffin, she's going for more. And KP's low on HP, Nate's coming back on the other end, but Saunders answers back right away. And Muffin's also low on HP. And for Shopify Rebellion, they want to maybe try to fight back into the choke point, but more, most importantly, to salvage that spike. Yeah, Polly is in such a power position, hearing all these sound Ooh. cues and baby TZ right there to help her out. Shopify, My they're under God. so much pressure. I did not expect this from X10 to be so aggressive outside the push. And now the roles have been reversed. Garage is open. Shopper for Abelli moves inside the seaside and also is planning for spawn. You can see Flowerful has a lot of positioning here. This post is not too shabby for Shopify. That knife should allow a lot of information for X10. They realize Huge. nothing is in the site. Huge information. High gear available. Gravity well coming out from Benita. That's going to delay for a bit. Not even a halfway, but they go for the double. Pulled into the back spawn. Oh. Information on the second one. Low HP onto Muffin, but Benita cannot clutch that 3v1. And that's a huge piss around for X10 to continue this momentum on Haven. Again, X10 so decif decisive. That first round pistol, that fast C split now coming on. And it seems like X10, they are just absolutely utilizing their kit almost to perfection. We yeah. talked about the wind conditions of Neon. Yeah. Boom, right away. Muffin, <laughs> she's not going to shy away from that A main control. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful relay bolt that she had followed, like that was following the trailblazer around the corner from Melissa. So knowing from that information of where that trailblazer is coming in, okay, there's one on the left, there's one still playing towards the window. You can aim that relay bolt to get the maximum value out of it and not just go for a blind relay. And into this round, Looks like for Shopify for Rebellion, it's a full force into C. Yeah, they don't want to give X10-11. Saunders so aggressive. A lot of ground, C site completely given up. And you can see both members of X10, Astra and Chamber, they want to control this garage, and Shopify are going to take the fight Ooh. to them. They flash another one on the top of the window, the Aftershock too, because of that. Yep, a great drill from a fault line, concussed, okay. nothing that we could do. And this full force fight that's coming in here for Shopify for Rebellion looks perfect. Only one ally left for Ginny. She gets double flanked on that pinch into the Seaside Pulse Plant. And Shopify, they get success out of the force. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this has been kind of the funny storyline for Shopify as well. If I think back yesterday on Bind, it seems like these simple, just in-your-face strats have been a nice breather for Shopify. They're able to convert these simple, fast rounds. Yeah. We'll see if they're able to do it on an actual gun round here. A healthy purchase, 
finally, I mean, this is signs of life, at least for Shopify. They will be able to control the economy from here on out, hopefully keep X10's money down in the dumps so that they can start to really chip away and make this comeback a reality. Now we have a free piece of utility that was used by Ginny that gets a lot of information that Shopify Rebellion wants to try to go quickly once again, but this time towards the A side. And we're not letting down, letting go of the pace. And yeah, we saw that little boom bot. <laughs> Vacuumed up Ginny as she falls. A little bit of damage being done by X10. Two kills, not too bad. Damage as well onto Lori. Well, we'll take those, we'll take those. We will take those. If you're Ginny, you don't want to take those, but it's all good. The boom bots can be a little bit possessed sometimes. We've seen it happen before, but it's all good. I mean, Shopify, again, it's just an eco round, but being able to have an eco round be as clean as that, it's got to mean a lot if you're down 310 going into the second half. So every little bit counts. Remaining. And Sonder, we're looking straight at her, one away from that showstopper, and you can see Four members of Shopify, very much near this A main area. Early Boombot and Bird. Looks like we want to end this now, Christine, for X10. A big investment, and now it's been heard. An operator invested into Baby TZ as Baby a lot Mr. of them are on low HP. The timing low here. Armor. <laughs> the fact that that chamber trip was right there, alerted Sonder right off the rip. That could have been devastating, but Polly is going to find her luck at timing as well. Ooh. This is not going to look too good here for X10. Like I said, they wanted to invest a lot into this round, wanted to shut it down right away, but definitely got punished on that aggressive push down towards window at mid, and that's definitely going to be the call. As they heard the operator for Shopify Rebellion, will they try to hunt it down? They should. There's so much time left on the spike. Any second now, Shopify, the communication should be coming through. It's a little bit too quiet. It does feel like X10 are saving, so I wouldn't be surprised to see hunting down and Lori's going. She's just going for it. <laughs> she, she's just solo going for it. Okay. A little bit uh, a silver lining here for X10, as it seems as though at least for the rest of this round where the spike's going to go off. The last two players will be able to salvage this Operator and the Vandal in the hands of Ginny. But that's going to tell a lot here for Shopify Rebellion. Knowing that this op came out very early, they have to try to figure out where BBTZ is going to position herself here on the future rounds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see BBTZ maybe going towards that long C. We saw that sniffing coming down front B with yeah. the lower weaponry. This time it could be that Operator in hand. I'd like to see Muffin getting that A main control just like on that pistol. I thought... Yeah. That was absolutely X10's win condition. But you can see Baby TZ, she wants to go for that A main control. And which is why you, every, everybody else Everyone's is pulling shifting. back. Exactly. Yep. Because at the beginning in that piss run, is, it was exactly those three players. Muffin, Alyssa, and Ginny. And they're going to try to use this towards middle on forcing around this Vandal and the Operator was kept behind. Baby TZ will be the first contact as she's waiting around the corner and she's too far from her TP. And Sonder looked like she wanted to paint you up, but she decides to hold on to it. Baby TZ, this timing could be so deadly. Oh! Sonder, how do you hit that? With the headshot on top of that. But because of the three player push at the beginning of the round, the trigger discipline and then the crossfire to allow three kills to come Jeez. in for X10 and the spike down. Seekers already out. Benita's close, trying to punish at least Muffin onto Bunny. Half blind, the swing out, could not connect onto Ginny. With the spike still down and the last Seeker still chasing, that is a nightmare once again for Shopify. Oh man, Flowerful. The jig is up. X10, they understand that this flank is coming. Flowerful has been so close in so many Kill clutches for, for Shopify side. A lot of time left on the clock. Spike right in front of her, but three insane headshots have to come here. Yeah, but the good news is that it's all individual battles. And here's the first. Connects onto left. Alyssa. 30 seconds left, I plenty of time to get the spike. But now as the spike icon disappears from the POV of the last two players, you know she's close. Double swing out from Polly and Ginny, and they put 11 on the board. What a round coming out here for X10. and. <laughs> it all started with Baby TZ just kind of getting clotheslined, right? And it looked so <laughs> hectic and so dangerous. Sonder, I hope we can get a replay of that tap. There it is. But somehow, some way, that, that, that walk down mid, right? Even with the lower weaponry, just completely catches Shopify off guard. 
with that, and uh, though that pick that they got from Sonder onto BBTZ will not allow for any operators to be salvaged. It was dropped so far behind into A long. This round breaking the doors very early for Shopify. That was Benita spraying it across, and a knife gets thrown down. Getting oh, information no. there. Yeah, she's gonna get a little bit of damage out of that one, and also no TPs to be able to get away. That broke it. But from that knife that we saw was a push here from X10 down towards along C. Yeah, Baby TZ has yeah. some help in Ginny just arriving. These jellies, these cabbages, is being such an issue. Rolling Thunder on top of that. We're clearing out the A site. Time to play the retake now for X10. What do we have here? Basically an overdrive. Couple of flashes that could maybe help. Four players left. This drill coming out from KP is going to be such an issue. X10, they've got to bait it out. Otherwise, this retake is going to be near impossible. Buffett's waiting for the call. First flash to get info, relay bolt. There is that aftershot that gets thrown right away from the beginning. Trailblazers already been wasted. Nice little jump out from Muffin with the first kill, but then full blind. Nice wow. util by Lori as we push towards the spawn. What a nice post blind hold by Shopify. Clean, clean kills there for KP as well. And that drill, man. Breach and that post plant under that hell. It's such a nuisance. Oh, yeah. But X10, they did identify it. I mean, that retake was in action. You saw it too. Isolating with the walls coming out from the Neon to make sure she could drop down and just try to have that 1v1 in hell yeah. and not get sprayed from graffiti. Yeah, I, I'd like to see Baby TZ have a little bit of help from the beginning at that A site. Somebody yeah. to start with her to break the dart, break the boom bot, break whatever utility shop by sending your way and then leave her because too many times now we've seen these boom bots at the A site just having having fun, having their way. So we'll see if any adjustments come out. The adjustment is Muffin. She wants she wants a frag. Oh yeah, but she gets popped off by Benita inside the spawn. And we're trying to answer back. Meanwhile, for Shopify Rebellion, pushing it inside the C site. That's how they wanted to answer. Going for full aggression with a hero rifle off the back of Ginny. Oh, they do no. two damage onto that one too, so that could salvage a second weapon onto Alyssa. Null Command also available on a three versus two for Shopify. Oh, this timing for Bonita, just barely making it past Alyssa. And Ginny all alone. Such a powerful spot from Sonder. This timing this round is insane, Van. Oh, yeah. She just snuck through. They're pinging towards the spawn. Oh. For Shopify in that drop. Will it get hurt? So far, no reactions from that breach. But Benita comes up towards Long C. Easy peek. And just like that, into the second half, we've only spread the lead now by three rounds for X10. Yeah, this is the perfect timing for a timeout. I think X10, they've got to stop this momentum. A Shopify gets so dangerous yeah. in these moments, right? Yeah. I mean, we've been seeing it all week long. No matter what the score line is at the halftime, something happens for the squad going into the second. I mean, uh, they just they get this new second wind, and all of a sudden, they just look like completely different players than that of the first. Yeah, and even when we're looking at trying to digest a little bit how X10 has been playing that defense, uh, Aggression towards the A long when they're using that uh, Sky with the Neon and the KO. If not, lots of pushes down towards B. But what does Shopify really do from then? Realizing that pressure, they always run into an open C site split if they wanted to. So how do you change this around now with this timeout from X10? Uh, I, like I said, I think Baby TZ needs a little bit more help towards that A. There was okay. just too much information and too much pressure, even though it was just one boom bot, That's right? Fair. So need somebody to hold Chamber's hand in the beginning of the round, break the utility, so that Chamber can just be a little bit more loose and keep the attackers guessing, right? You don't yeah. know how many defenders are left there. Is it two? Is it three? Or is it just Baby TZ alone? So that's something Shopify are going to be finding out. And for X10, it's on them to keep them guessing. I like that call because sometimes when you're looking at like that default meta where with this composition from Shopify Rebellion, instead of a breach, you have a haunt. Sometimes you want to throw a haunt into sewers so that you could get that uh, that information towards the A side. So you need a second player on defense to break that haunt so the chamber could get the, uh, uh, the positioning, which is very similar against this boom bot. But for this round, X10 looking to play aggro once again. We talked about those three players towards A long. It happens, but the difference here is that push down towards long C, where we're about to have a head-to-head -head between BBTZ and Benita. Oh, oh she saw the barrel. The gun. Easy kill. Oh, boy. Easy peasy, baby TZ. Capitalizing. <laughs> that was close. I Sandra love it. I love Corey it. also following up, and it's just, it's collapsing Oof. all in front of X10's eyes. Always losing control of Garage from the aggression again. 
just not getting enough garage grass control and shop of our ability and realizing the pushes from the extremities. Let's just go down the middle. And now it's an open C a, a site where they're going to plant. Baby TZ left just kind of scratching her head, wondering what the heck just happened. Seems like there were duels all across the board. And aggression, Shopify, I like that. Right after the timeout, you know, you think both squads are like, okay, look, we're trying hard now. Yeah. We, we got our try hard pants. <laughs> we're going to take every round as thorough as possible. But Shopify say, nah, we're getting in your face. Screw the high percentages. We're just dueling. Yeah. And KP, the high player for the team for Shopify Rebellion. Benito with the experience. Trailing behind 9-3 to three is really nothing for a team like Shopify. An experience of the coach of Rob Wiz. You'll be able to have that, that pep talk of, okay, we've got one round. Let's take it one run at a time. And they've done these comebacks before. And for X10 now, BBTZ, the, the silver lining is being able to save this Vandal. Also allows for them to maybe work around that and the Tilda Foss that she has this round here. Yeah, I think she used it in the last one. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're so right. I forgot about that. She's just got the Vandal. She does have a little bit extra cash, so this is another tough decision if you're X10, right? You don't want to give away one more round to close that gap, but looks like X10 are deciding to go okay. with a half buy. A little quasi buy, and that's fair, right? You want to be able to get that operator in Baby TC's hands, and if you look at those credits, that's exactly what they're planning for yep. in round 22. We talked about grass control. This time it's a hit from the team, but oh, all of them throws the grass. Yeah, and nobody spots it. Muffet's damaged, and we're doing a lot of pressure from X10. Flash to initiate, but the smoke also does not allow to get any players flash. We fight back towards grass. We're falling down for X10, though. And finally, what? Baby GZ, that hero rifle comes what? out. And then a close range with the sheriff on the head of Lori. But the spike, it's stuck in spawn, forcing out the rolling thunder. It's a 2v2. It doesn't hit anybody. And Benita's on that flank all the way from grass. Oh no, no more bullets left. And now it's a one versus one. KP is running away. She knows, she knows Baby TZ is hot on her heels. She's gonna try to make it fast to spawn. She's got the fault line coming right up and Baby TZ, she's playing it safe. She doesn't realize that she's already in the site. Oh, what a hectic start. Now it's just come down to a 1v1. KP has no idea. Oh, she saw her. Now here, we'll see what happens with KP. Still looking towards, oh, Jeez. what a pick by KP. Looking back towards Long C, the reaction time to get the headshot onto Baby TZ. She stays around for shop of our villain because that could have been a dangerous change in momentum for X10. It could have been disaster, absolute disaster. X10 are just thriving in these moments and Thankfully, thankfully, Sandra was able to drop that paint shell down, buy it just a little bit more time, Great do a call. little bit of splash damage, but my goodness, right X10, me. hot on Shopify's heels here. Healthy buy, that operator finally on the table here for Baby TZ, and they're going back to what was kind of oh. working. Long C aggression. A little bit of a trade off of Flash, really bolts. Great utility from both ends. It's a chess match, and we come out with a draw. Baby TZ all alone here on the A site. Benita inching forward. Oh, this duel. So close. It's such an off angle as well. Might not be expected, and now she gets into the range of her TP. Baby TZ is waning down right now. You are on the other end, though, here comes the cosmic divide. And it's actually the flash of that dies and the oh. spike. Committed to a second kill, doesn't work out. BBTZ gets punished by Fireful, and it gives a chance for SR to plant. And this Astral Wall you spoke of should allow that plant to go through. Three versus three, and two flashes on the back of Ginny. They're gonna go fast. Muffin, she wants to go. That suck is huge. And Saunders at the graffiti. A cosmic divide coming out from X10 as well. Big flash, that's a cue to push out. Trade off, but in favor of Shopify. Wow. They keep it alive. Time to make your wish of who's gonna win because we're tied up 11 to 11. Man, and it's so tricky when you're the Asha. Do you use that suck to be able to delay that retake or do you use it to take the enemy off the spike, right? Benita already in the site decides to use it to buy a little bit more time and it comes right in the nick of time. Muffin, that's exactly where she thrives. Again, Baby TZ finding this opening in that off angle was so huge for X10. The wise words of Tarek when every time he's doing these watch parties. We got a game in our hands. <laughs> now we got a game on our hands. <laughs> True.
And with that extended, still are relentless. Another three player push out towards C. But a four spy coming in. We got Bulldogs. We got a Vandal. And this pressure that they had before towards mid, it worked out. But the Seekers is going to give a lot of info. Same thing, countering out towards this uh, A side. But we're now filtering Shop of Rebellion towards the C side. The difference two players playing inside Garage for X10. Oh, Flowerful going right into a trap, but she still gets away with one. At least Baby TZ is able to trade, but Shopify, they're in the C site. And this quick flank, oh. But thankfully for Shopify, they're bringing the squad. Half line, two players. KP with a counter flash if needed from the top C. Oh. Unfortunately, Bulldog bites onto both Benina and Lori. KP trying to just slow down that clock while this re-push is coming out from BBTZ towards Garage. She's moving up right now, looking to get that pick up to KP. The flash a little bit too late, gets the kill full blinded. Sonda now stuck at long by herself. Satchel to come out, but the retake comes in, and X10 are now at that point. I love that, the Aya. I uh, love the Aya. I'm shocked. <laughs> I, I'm shocked and I'm gasping for air. That's gonna burn. That's gonna hurt if you're Shopify. That was a 4v4 post. They had the utility to yes. be able to stop them at bay, but X10 are so damn fearless. All of these retakes and the rounds that they've won, they, again, just not letting go of W, and they fully believe in each other. They swing for each other, and they trade each other, and it's, uh, it results in a round win on the board. And that's one thing that uh, the community, also the APAC fans, are giving a lot of credit into X10's playstyle. If it's not for the slow play to try to play into the minds of your opponents, at least the fundamentals of the being able to trade with your teammates. You don't always have to use that utility to get the perfect flash to go for the swing for the kill. Just play your numbers and you see that. Muffin's the first contact. There's already two players behind her ready for the trades. Yeah, you love to see it. Power in numbers and you know, you always feel good. Even if you don't get any frags and you see that you set up your teammate, a yep. little, nice little alley If You say, hey, were they blind? Yup. <laughs> nice little assist, things of that nature. But man, I I don't even, it feels like Shopify in this timeout, there's just gotta be so much to discuss. Oh yeah. So many, I, I mean, and it's, it's tricky. Do you try to fix your mistakes with only one round left or do you just pull out that one curveball strat that you've been saving for this exact moment on Haven? We'll see. I mean, they've got the ultimates to work with. The showstopper up online. KP with that breach ultimate. It almost this looks is like for everything. Exactly. And it almost looks like they want to fight towards the A aggression coming out from X10. Got the boom bot already lined up to look down towards the sewers. Here comes that flash to come out. But that rolling thunder could be huge here. And that could punish this push coming out from X10. A lot of utility being traded back and forth. KP. That's nice. Oh, the paint shell over the wall. That is so nice. And now the showstopper to come out too. Oh. Long range connects. Muffin is down. And Ginny is going to have to try to hold the side bar herself. Moving down towards the sewers where Flowerful is about to go head to head against her. Meanwhile, though, being pinched. Baby TZ to support from behind. Gets the kill with the Tolda Fuss and moving forward with her teammate. It's a four versus two. Does not connect it to the last one. And Polly will have to try to clutch. Spike yet to be planet. But we still get the kill for KP. We fight back, and we're going into overtime. What a huge frag coming out from Flowerfold down overtime. in that short A. I tell you what, if Baby TZ got that frag, that was 100% game on for X10 to be able to convert and retake and close this one out. So pivotal frag coming out here for Flowerful and Man, this A main contestion right now, I love this look for Saunders. Yeah. In conjunction with, that, with KP fault lining, towards that A, that paint shell over the wall, I did not see that coming at all. And, and to look at the counter utility that was coming out, at least from X10, to try to survive that was a beautiful neon wall that came up so that they could actually try to get away as much as they could. But I feel that was Careful, maybe man. a mishap of not being able to understand that KP did have that Rolling Thunder ready that they could fight back with. So maybe that could be the jitters of the elimination matchup. But all that doesn't matter anymore. We are into this overtime. We have started things off here. And X10 are back on the attack. And they're back to what was working is this is looking like that pistol once again. <laughs> Sonder, she's bit. 
Oh, but thankfully, nice. Bonita following up with that utility to help Sondra out. Have that stopping power, but X10, they're not slowing down. That's a grab need to stop things off before, but the rehit oh, comes geez. in, running through the wall. Two kills from Sonder. It's Sondery time! That's my finances back, though! From the grave. Paint from shell kills grave. onto BBTZ. Player advantage coming out here for Shopify. That spike is down in a peculiar spot. Well, not too peculiar. Muff is able to just <laughs> quickly snag that one. Interesting. The plan for a spawn, the fall line immediately out. Low HP is going to be Muffin, and yeah, these trades are coming out, and the swings are perfect. Shopify Rebellion in the lead when they were strolling on the defense for so long in that first half. Yeah, and it's all thanks to Sonder. It's all <laughs> thanks to Sonder. I mean, even from the grave, getting one more frag with that paint shell was everything. But more so than that, Shopify, they fought this time around. All half long on their defense. They didn't put up that sort of defense on C site, not once. So this time, finally, it's paying off at least in OT. <laughs> <laughs> what answer can we have now for X10? The tides have turned. We thought it was going to be X10 getting this map in the bag with how confident they looked here on this first half. But on this defense, the, the continuous pushes they currently have is not panning out. And seems like this time it's going to be a change. Yeah. I think that's a good response coming out. It does look like Muffin wants to re-aggress down this long C. When you see a Sky and a Neon together, that's usually what that means. Trip in front B, so X10 should have a good idea of a B hit if it comes. Relay Bolt actually did punish onto Benita. Can they get this kill onto oh, Long? Oh, no! that's huge! Nice picks from Benita on the top of the boxes. And that just opens up the B side. Thankfully, though, Silver lining, Polly answers back. There. That's also no stars on the pulse plan for the attack. And again, Sonder in such a power position, always pushing this forward. Push. This crossfire should be so deadly for X10. And it works out. Gravity Well then comes out. Satchel not allowing Jenny to push out. She goes for the unhand throw. Sonder's full oh, no. blind. Jenny does Maybe. get the kill onto Lori. It's a two versus one. Maybe. Make that even one. Somehow, it's back to a doable situation for X10. Forced now to pick up onto the defuse. It's now at halfway. Off the spike, gets the kill. Jenny gets the clutch. And we're going into a second OT. That is incredible. Ginny just somehow slipping past that timing between Ginny oh and Saunder. The fact that Lori accidentally blinded Saunder and she's able to slip past into that A-Link. I, I mean, this crossfire, you should have never been able to survive if you're Ginny here. Two players, Saunder and Spawn, another in A-Link. That, uh, I'm not sure what, just, what we just watched. I don't know how <laughs> Shopify were able to lose that one, but X10, <laughs> They, That's incredible. It, I think it came down to heroic plays, right? Those pushes that we had, the answers back from Polly. KP knew that she was flanking back or rotating back towards the ceiling, still loses that fight. And now in those OT moments, it's the heroic plays that really shines and helps the team move forward. And now we switch things around. X10 back onto the attack. And Shopify Rebellion, at the beginning of this round, stacked so many players towards the A side expecting that. Yeah. It's X10. not going to work out. Really like this C split. It's on. Game on. They've already got garage control. But Benita's in the smoke. This could be very dangerous right now, right after. Really, Bolt's going to stun KP. Huge stun. Benita made it inside the cubby. Oh, we're pinching in. She gets the first kill, but it's going to get a pinch towards the back. And the last three players of Shopify Rebellion are at the spawn. Barfo and Lori fighting back though, a two versus two, a flash to blind, wow. a two versus one, and Lori so low on HP at 10. Nothing left in terms of utility, can't even heal herself. It's a perfect position now, Whoa. nice tap, but it gets answered back. A nice back and forth coming out from X10, and the ties have turned once again. <laughs> Such back and forth rounds coming out, Alyssa. Almost getting the better, but Lori, that flick, man, that flick onto Asha was so huge. Alyssa barely with any HP. What a doable round coming out here. And I mean, X10, it's very simple and very straightforward so far. At least the last eight <laughs> rounds have been for X10, right? Whether yep. you're on the defense or whether you're on the attack, they are just 
beelining it straight on for that A main control or this C split. And most of the time, it's working. And if it's not working, it's creating so much pressure onto Shopify that they're having to adjust and maybe not stick to their own game plan and just react in those moments. So a lot of pressure coming out here for X10. Well, now the pressure is going to be even heavier now for Shopify Rebellion as they're behind by one round in this second overtime. Calling out the timeout, trying to figure out what they could do at this point. I'll give a chance to say, hey, how are you guys doing here? In the chat, in the audience. What's up? A lot to talk about. At least you got money, right? It's OT. <laughs> I mean, sometimes these OTs, especially when you start getting to the third, fourth ones, it can get pretty hazy. Yeah, and that's a crazy part. You talk about money, and yeah, you may have a lot, but maybe not in the hands of Sonder. Uh, sorry, BBTZ. BBTZ. This is a gamble, a glass cannon off into this round on defense. Yeah, this time she does have the assistance in Ginny, so that should allow her to not take all her HP away from a single Boombot <laughs> this time. So we'll see if she's good for this shot because Shopify, they're over in the same main area early. And that Boombot's already going out, but you can't have that KO to support, so it is going to try to track down oh, that so chamber aggressive. in the corner. Meanwhile, yes, the quick push towards the C, trying to count counter and answer back for Shopify Rebellion. They're going to decide to push back towards this A site. X10 has all of this information. Battle towards the spawn. Benita cuts that on the first kill, but it gets immediately traded out by Alyssa. More pinch coming in, and Shop for Rebellion decide to push back and try to fight back against that single flanker. Huge for Alyssa to get away with her life here. It almost seemed like X10 were just corralling Shopify. They wanted Shopify to commit into that A site. Thankfully, Alyssa is able to get one and fall back, and it's just going to keep Shopify left wondering who's flanking, how many are flanking. So they decide to get into the A site. But both satchels already used a flash and a Who fault line, so everything's on cooldown for both initiators. And Baby TZ lands a beautiful shot onto Sonder. Another player down for Shopify Rebellion as the disadvantage now falls upon them. And this triple flank coming out is going to be so deadly. The line of sight here for Flowerful, she's able to just talk so many flashes. But a 1v1 towards Sewers. Lori at least makes it two players now flanking, and she wants to hold that W. And now we're fighting towards the cubby of the A-Long. Flowerful continues her job, and unfortunately it doesn't work out. A triple flander comes down to a null. Back to Baby TZ on two versus one. The tap onto the spike, but it gets heard. Does not get that shot onto Lori. Couldn't make it a one versus one. And we might have a long series in our hands now, Christine. <laughs> we absolutely Overtime. might. And, you know, it's it's tough, right? Triple flank, usually it can catch you off guard, but that means that baby TZ, she's got to now slow it down, right? She can't go quite as fast. And when you're in that site, in that post, and you're supposed to be under pressure, you're supposed to start hearing that retake going on in heaven or in spawn. And if you don't hear anything, it's a little bit too weird. So definitely for Shopify, they understood that spawn was safe they put all their focus onto that flank and they're able to secure that post but man again shopify they're taking a page out of x10's book look at this aggression oh polly almost <laughs> had that timing and as she walks away gets spotted by sonder meanwhile though on the a side muffin opens up towards a they had a different change of pace to just have that neon go into the cubby first to avoid some utility if there but flower falls on the top of the box of sewers Good for one end the information for the team. Rotate comes back from Shopify Rebellion. It's not going to be a flank. So that trip is going to help a lot for X10 to just focus back towards spawn. KP, full set of utility. Expect her to set up Saunder for some frags here. Flash is coming out and a fault line. Counter flashes through as well. A suck Beautiful. on the ground. Shows off her out. One more to go in sewers. And that's BBTC in a left side cubby. Goes for the TP, so they know that she's there. One sticking onto the spike. Wow. Sonder goes for the satchel, then on to the panel for the kill. And shot fire belly are back in the lead. Love to see it when Razes use that Put satchel for yep. that exact that's moment. Cool. Right around the corner and just crosshair displays. I think I love those better than just those double satchel fast showstopper <laughs> plays. Uh, it's just such a field bad if oh, you're yeah. the player that gets bumped up. But <laughs> man, decisive. It, both 
I think the last three rounds bans in this OT have looked identical to yeah. both squads, right? Yep. Fast towards Garage, then getting pushed around to C, and the defenders pushing long C and corralling them into that A hit. So we'll see what this one looks like, but it's looking pretty similar once again. Yeah, this time towards the A side, there's also a grab well. We're going very aggro now. First kill onto Muffin, really bold onto the left side. Sonder, who made it already towards Sewers, but it's being watched! And wow. like, oh, they got caught into the door trying to go through the wall of Neon. And it lets Muffin fall, they get punished for that. Jenny's stuck in the corner. Elisa gets traded out. It's a three versus two. Everything else is open, and SR are falling back to C. Yeah, and baby TZ and Polly both just completely rotated, over rotated. They Shopify, I think they heard that sound cue. They're just beelining it back towards the C. And I like this adjustment coming out for Baby TZ. Instead of just following them back directly into Garage, they're retaking in the C-Link. This is so hard to retake. So no stars available. Cues. Exactly. This is all heard here. Everybody could focus towards Eesh. spawn. And look at that utility. It's still around. Polly gets the first kill as they're going Wait with the fundamentals minute. once again. Flashes all around from both initiators. This looks really good for Shopify Rebellion to win this in OT 16 to 14. Wow, wow, wow. I, you've got to be so thrilled. Such a sigh of relief if you're Shopify. I mean, just considering how one-sided that first half was. And my goodness, I, they are clawing their way back in every map, every series, Shopify Rebellion. I wouldn't want to be Rob Wiz right now, sitting in my seat, oh just my trying to watch this game, or even coach on so the many other end. White hairs exactly, Sense Bench probably doing the same thing too. I mean, this has been an amazing first map to start off this series. We talked about this. This is the elimination game. You have to put everything onto the table, and boy, did they do it on both ends of Shopify and X10. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you're X10, you feel a little bit for them. This was supposed to be a punished yes. pick, and. Uh, for Shopify, traditionally it has been, right? Haven has been a bit of a struggle, slower adjustments to the farm, but thankfully for Shopify at least, those adjustments did come out to play. And I gotta say, this game must have been extremely difficult to adjust to because it yes. was just hectic, it was all over the place. W keys across the board, you're playing across the Neon, who's just everywhere all yep. at once. At the same time for both of these teams, it comes down to that moment where you don't really have to overthink for IGLs, right? It's like, okay, well, we do this tight adjustments, but let's still do the same push. Let's still be as aggressive. Let's just do that small change in terms of our fundamentals to make sure that we win our duels. And for me, it almost feels that it came down to that, especially in these OT moments, where now, once again, the young fraggers for Shopify Rebellion shine once more to be able to win this first map 16 and 14. No! Nice! And Rob Wiz, a sigh of relief. Well, more of a yell <laughs> of relief. You can see it on his yeah. face there. Man, I, it, again, we're going into map two. This yeah. was just map one. I, uh, map one of a best of three. Exactly. And we actually have technically three series going on today so let's just hurry up the pace let's bring it bring this to a break and when we come back the analyst desk to break down that map and prepare for pearl Welcome back, everyone, to the Valorant Game Changers Championship right here in Berlin. Of course, I'm Golden Boy alongside Mimi and Ender. As we break down map two, which will be Pearl, and that will be Shopify Rebellion's pick, a, a map that Shopify Rebellion have been very, very good at. And on the flip side to that, Ender, for, uh, you know, X10, 
it is going to be a bit of a challenge to, to find a way to crack that egg. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that somehow, some way, uh, Shopify Rebellion have managed to be able to just, like, forge into their own. A <laughs> yeah. very intact egg. A I very intact egg. One. I was really trying to figure out how I was going to get to the question. Yeah. And I did it. And then Mimi had I'm to bring it back around. I respect that. I respect that a lot. <laughs> no, honestly, I think it, it is interesting because XN Sapphire don't have a ton of experience on the stage with this map. They've played it three times, as far as I can tell. One of the most recent being in that grand finals against Ultra ego celeste and they lost it pretty uh, convincingly in yeah. that series so they've had a lot of time to come in with new ideas potentially new compositions but for me on these large maps my eye is always drawn to baby tz what she can accomplish with the lurks and, and sort of the slow play xn sapphire likes to go for yeah, yeah. her lurks are so effective I, I would not hate to see an agent switch come through here uh, i think that will the astro viper comps have their merit and that there's a reason why this team has ran it uh, a lot of teams have moved away from that going for the double initiator some teams even committing into the same which I think are all really valid options. And when you're facing a pretty tough opponent here in Shopify, where this is one of their absolute best maps, I would hope that they have something ready. Yeah, yeah. it's actually interesting, too, because looking at the, the Shopify guild game, uh, you know, in that matchup, guild did opt to run the breach. And I know that they're, I know that you're, you're kind of a, a, of a breach I'm very breach built in, in, yeah. in this match. <laughs> I just want to talk about it, because with the with the nerfs coming in to KO and to Sky, a lot, both of these teams have actually stayed very invested with Sky. But I think breach is actually just, like, so incredible incredibly good in this patch because with the flash changes to KO what was previously like probably his best ability is now probably his worst yeah. with breach you still get the stun which is fantastic you get two excellent flashes you get uh, something that's basically just a better molly in the aftershock and on top of that his ult is just so impactful I want to see more teams running breach especially when they run these neon comps yeah the neon and raise comps right the, the combination there because I think especially like you take pearl for example uh, a neon map for most teams there is some raise in the mixture too but yeah. when you have breach and Astra like a huge range on those abilities with the concuss with the Astra pull and the concuss there too like that follow up from a neon that can just zoom all the way and play off those abilities is really sick yeah now uh, I do want to let everyone know while this may seem like we're, we're going for a podcast because I never get invited to plat chat so it's very <laughs> nice uh, to be able to talk about a game that I enjoy very much so uh, with my friends uh, we do want to let him thank you come on Bren what uh, are you I doing He's man a terrible person um, but uh, we do want to let everyone know that there was a, a a PC issue uh, on the stage, so I they're actually swapping out the PCs. That's the reason why we're taking a little bit longer here, just letting everyone know at home what the dealio is. Uh, and I said dealio in 2022, so for right now, we're just going to continue to talk about this matchup until further notice. I do have some insider information that I, that I heard while you are talking. You? I heard that during the break, Christy, with his night armor on, went out there with a sword and was <laughs> trying to entertain the audience during the break yeah. and accidentally broke the PC. You know what? I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Was yes. the other guy the computer? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but, uh, you know, the, you bring up a, a, a really good point, though, um, about the breach and, and really about the changes that we're seeing here. Because let's not also forget, too, that Pearl, uh, you know, it, it's relatively new into the rotations. Well, I mean, I feel sure. like everyone has kind of... it's brand new with these changes as Yes, well, right? yeah, exactly. I feel like everyone has gotten a, a, an identity of the map, but no one really is, like, that confident with compositions mm -hmm. quite yet. At least that's my takeaway from it. I think there's still a lot of room for change, and, and I think as well with the, the initiator changes that have come through there, there's even more so yeah. um but yeah I, I think it is one of the maps similar to haven in fact where a, a lot of it can be defined like you can kind of play it in a way where you're very entrenched where you're very heavy on the stall with these kind of astro viper comps or or the compositions that have like heavy mollies to stall out or you can define it more that talking about your defensive side with being more like opening gambit heavy where you're playing like haven where you're always pushing forward and trying to take space and the reason i really like breach on this map is because he gives you the flexibility to play with both whereas something like like the fade raise comp, it feels like you always have to be like fighting mid with a season eight, fighting long with a season eight off the rip to get mm. that same value. And if you're getting like the the positioning wrong, you're guessing wrong where the enemy it's team is. It's just like is. a gamble of big yeah. utility off the yeah. rip. The abilities go down, whereas when you're playing something like Neon plus Breach, you use that utility, Neon plays off of it, and then you can just post her up there. So you yeah. still have acquired something off of all that. And that's something cool that I, I, I this is going super broad now, about like the, do the progression of Valorant towards like a more like MOBA, is that the right word? MOBA's? MOBA? Like that's what Multiplayer we Multiplayer online <laughs> battle arena. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah like, like that kind of thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's ruined me. Why but do you I think I dress to... for this? It's for the battle arena. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I was trying to get at the fact that a lot of this game is coming down to like timings and stuff with, with especially initiator plays, like that triple initiator yeah. composition that a lot of teams start playing on a set. It's about va balancing the timing on your utility coming back online because you can normally get three waves in around. It, it's just really cool to watch teams figure it out. So look, guys, uh, it's no surprise we're still going to be waiting for that PC to get sorted out. Uh, but let's actually look ahead uh, to our next matchup that is going to be coming up later on today because Ender and Mimi actually That's had us. an opportunity. That's you guys to sit down with Mel and Bob from Cloud9 White to talk about their journey up until this point. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hi there, it's Mimi and Ender here, and we're joined by Mel and Bob from Cloud9 White for a little chat. And I just want to start things off by getting our formalities out of the way. And the one question I have for you, yes or no answer, are you guys going to win this tournament? Yes. Yes? All right. Set. I mean, do, cool. Do we, do we hey, have over? Yeah, let's wrap it up yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah you're we're good, good to go. Right. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, I'm being told. We have to ask at least like a couple oh, more okay. questions. Really? Do you have something? Uh, uh, Bob, uh, What's your favorite animal? A frog. Cool. I Love mean, that. that's pretty informative. Uh, they want something about Valorant. Something about Valorant? Yeah. We should do like that. Like at least something. I okay. Mean. Okay. Fine. We can. Uh, okay. Sure. Mel. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's talk about the team finding finding the putting the whole team together here. Obviously, Bob was a newer addition in this year. Um, can you sort of talk about the the process and how you scouted out Bob and what it was like to bring her into the team? Yeah, for sure. Annie was obviously stepping down with content creation, and the literally only person we had on our radar and that we wanted to pick up was Bob. Bob is free agent, and that was just the most no-brainer decision ever. I can't, like, come on, anyone watching this? Like, <laughs> really? Who else are we going to pick up? Be honest. Be for real. How did you and, first uh, learn about her, though? Uh, I've known about Bob since, um, since like, Sonic, since they first came over from sure. NA, watching their first match uh, against Sentinels. Or not their very first, but the first, like, really big match, and that's how I came to know about Bob. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And and Bob, for you, I mean, you've had quite a long career to get here to Cloud9. Uh, you started down in Australia, you won first strike over there, got imported over to North America with the Sonics. Uh, it was a top 20 team in North America on that squad. And now you've transitioned over, playing on your first Game Changer squad with Cloud9 White. How does the team environment differ from the previous rosters you were a part of? Um, I was only on one roster basically before this, but sure. uh, I mean, the, the team is a lot more fun. Uh, my old teams were kind of ass cheeks. Ooh! <laughs> tell him, tell him. I, like, I like some of the, my teammates back then, sure. but we were definitely like not the best. We were, like, we were coming from OC, we didn't know much. Mm -hmm. We were like all very much learning when we came across. For you guys, you have played more open tournaments than I'm pretty sure most of the rest of the teams in this event, and you have lost a lot in those tournaments. What do you think that's brought you that has maybe pushed you above some of the other teams here? It's always better to play against teams that like challenge you more, right? Like you don't want to be playing against the same game teacher teams that you're stomping over and over. Sure. And it's not even just that, it's just the fact that that's where we want to be. We want to be better than all the teams we play in the co-ed tournaments. And so that's why we play in them. And losing in those matches, like especially in like the BCT Open qualifiers, where mm -hmm. it's like the most important matches for everyone playing, not just us, that gets us so much better experience than so much any other tournament can give you. Any other, any other GC tournament, any other open tournament, like that's where you actually prove yourself and make the biggest mistakes or make the smallest mistakes, and that's where you learn from the most mistakes, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, so obviously you you both have, you've won all the game changers, right? You come in, you say <laughs> you're gonna win here as well. So for both of you, starting with Bob, what is the final, what is the end goal here with Cloud9 and, and for your professional career as well? Um, I think ideally we like are able to make like a franchise spot, but I think it, it might it might not come down that way. Like I feel like sure. um, we'll end up you know moving off to different teams eventually in like franchise positions or like you know tier two teams trying to get into like a higher level. But I think I think that's the goal for all of us. Yeah. What about for you, Mel? I would say the same. I think our goal as a team right now would just be getting to like the Ascension League. And I think mm -hmm. as it stands, like kind of what Bob was talking about earlier, I think the environment in the team is like a very safe environment to like experiment and limit test and get better without judgment. And so we kind of want to have that environment too. It's totally fine for people to, in a sense, like graduate from game changers sure. and stuff like that. And everyone, if they anybody gets an opportunity onto a tier one or tier two team, like 100% take that. Like that's such a big step forward for women and yeah. GC teams, non-binary and trans folks. So 
And I think we, the best thing, the best thing we can do obviously is aspire for ascension and franchising, but on top of that, like building a good environment so people can improve mm -hmm. very quickly and faster than their, than their peers. Sure. Well, that journey starts here with your run at GC Champions. Very good luck to both of you and, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. And that will wrap things up. Thank you for that throw, Mimi. Oh, hello, Mimi. Oh, hi. It's, it's, <laughs> hi, Mimi. It, hi. I have to say, Bob, I respect your sister. <laughs> I love that. that I was, love Bob. <laughs> I also just love watching chat. It's just Bob, 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 Bob. period over. It's 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 incredible. Bob is yeah. just a, a pleasant name. And I love for her answer there. I think the most insightful part of the interview, obviously, was when we learned that Bob's favorite animal is the frog. Uh, and we talked to her a little bit after and found True. out the reason she likes frogs so much is uh, when she was younger in Australia, she grew up and, and had frogs. And... She just really loves him. If, if you go to her Twitter, there's a frog in the bio. And every time she replies to something, it's frog and then like a reaction emoji. So yeah. it'll be frog thumbs up or frog peace sign instead of just peace sign. Yeah, I don't know if you actually saw it in the interview clip there. But when she says, my favorite animal is a frog, I, I sent her the thumbs up because mm. I I'm aware you're aware of the Twitter you game. are you are up to your streets ahead with what the kids are talking about streets these ahead days. I like a community reference I, I like okay that. I'm all okay. right with that, that I don't like references on the desk because oh. I never know them I can never make a reference because maybe it just doesn't get it I make a wrestling reference she gets mad at me what you about know a Valorant reference okay <laughs> I would also get mad I I'm like wrestling anything to do with like sports is I do I do appreciate though one thing I will like to thank the Valorant community for genuinely is that people ha even though they tell me all the time we have no idea what you're talking about but when they look it up they look up the wrestling reference I made and, and they, they see it. how absurd mm -hmm. that world is then they're like okay it makes a lot of sense why you're the way you are so, so you're really just a teacher out there I'm out there just educating our our community That's on the world kind. of professional wrestling yeah, and ev know? everyone on socials they're all academics right? exactly you know they're going <laughs> and researching all the references, yeah. making sure they, they cite their sources, exactly. MLA format. Always cite, <laughs> always cite your sources there. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, again, folks, uh, we are obviously in a holding pattern here as we wait uh, for uh, the stage to actually get sorted out with uh, some of the PCs that are up there. Uh, and then once that is all cleared up, we'll be jumping into the matchup. But for now, we're just going to talk. So if yeah. you guys just join us for a little bit, have a good time. You know, chill, lay, lay Pull back. up a chair. Chill out. Come on in, guys. <laughs> you know? You know, come on, sit down, stay a while. Um, <laughs> this is excellent because we get the time to trap the viewers here where they have no choice but to listen to us. Yes. You can't mute the VOD, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I think we need to talk about something really important. We've talked about Bob and the frog. That's Kay. one thing. But there's a lot of stuffed animals at this event. And there's a lot of players with some little friends That's they've been true. bringing on stage. And I think KP with Salt, her penguin, who's been on stage for every single one of the matches, is a nice little extra, extra bit of moral support for this. You squad. know, we were talking about theories as to what has actually happened to cause the PC issue. Okay. Do we think that having a live stuffed animal on stage <laughs> could be problematic? A penguin might get up they to some funky they business. They need to keep with it pretty cool. I mean, maybe too cold for the computers? I don't know. Yeah. She froze then, it. Th th those inanimate objects, you really have to watch out you for really them, You really do. Know? Uh, have you ever watched Toy Story, GB? I, I, I have, and Toy Story 3 almost ended me, so <laughs> I don't want to go I mean, down to that path. I mean, to be honest, like, object permanence, I still don't really understand that, so I feel like anything could happen. And hey! there it is. Thank you, production. That is Salt, the one and only. The one and only. Uh, I I am a I'm a I'm a big penguin fan. Whenever I go to the uh, whenever I go to the zoos, I always I always seek them out. Actually, uh, years ago I went to uh, Sydney and okay. we went to the, the the Sydney Zoo over there. Beautiful, and they had like this whole set. I know I'm going into a big <laughs> keep on keep <laughs> going. I want to keep going. But it was it was just really cool. And then out of nowhere, like the penguins started clashing over a fish, and it was actually one really? of the most like just legit things ever. I was like, all oh, these. It was like wrestling down. in real life. It was <laughs> with penguins. Wait a minute. Okay, Wait, never mind. No. Wrestling isn't real, though. Isn't real it, quick, isn't before, it staged, unlike this, which is How really dare real. you? Before we go, we don't talk about it. Go to our next package. If you uh, had uh, to go up on stage, and chat, you guys could answer this as well. You went up on stage, you're playing here at Valorant, uh, you know, champions, game changers, uh, local lands, whatever, and you could bring one stuffed animal on the stage with you, what would it be? Oh, that is a fantastic question. I think it's got to be like just like something absurdly large. I have a stuffed goose at home yeah. that is like the size of a human being. You and have I think a it would stuffed be goose. <laughs> yes. Knowing everything I know about you, that is hilarious. Well, like not a real, like a stuffed animal. No, goose, I know. <laughs> 
a taxidermy goose. No, 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 no. Okay, this, this has gotten really way too morbid, way too quickly. But it's clear that stuffed animals are a buff. Think of Loud. They put they had a new stuffed animal every true. map that they've That's won. That's true. And they won that whole tournament. And cool story, by the way. Ospis was the player on Loud who was getting all of all of the stuffed animals, all of the dogs when they were on stage there. One of the players here at Game Changers Champions actually gave him the first dog, Naxi, um, uh, I, I believe they're dating, gave uh, him the, the the little husky dog that he had Aww, on stage yeah. when they, that he pulled out for their match versus Leviathan when they had that crazy comeback on Icebox. So a little bit of cross mingling between. That's the, two the scenes, deep so. Valorant lore. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna jump in though, and I never thought I would get to talk about this. But I, when I was little, my mom uh, made me this tiny little stuffed animal robot. His yeah. name was George, a robot. and I brought him everywhere. Yeah, it was oh, the I cutest you meant little like thing. An actual robot. You no, it was like, like it was like a. Crocheted or something like okay, I don't know. Cool. It was it was kind of that sort of deal. But that's yeah. awesome. I would I would I would bring George up on stage. He'd help okay. me out. Well, Jeez, I would George. have said it. Sweet. I would have said uh, what I wanted to say. But productions out here telling me that Quickly, I got thrown to this next word. video. No, nope, not gonna do it. Aww. Cloud Nine White, by the way, are gonna be facing off against Guild X in our second match. You can blame production for that one. But uh, actually, we have uh, Potter and Yinsu who had a chance to actually sit down with Roxy and Smurfette to chat with them about this upcoming match and the event. Hello everyone, I'm Yingsu here with Potter and now we're joined by two of the players from Guild Eggs. It's Roxy and Smurfair. Hi guys, welcome to the tournament. Now you are the number one seed out of Europe. You're the best team, but do you feel like you're the number one seed, especially with uh, the narratives coming into this tournament of people kind of being more excited for G2 Gozen, uh, despite the fact that you actually managed to beat them? Um, I don't know, I think we, we feel pretty confident being in number one seed now and I think we're pretty sure that we get to actually keep it. Like we're highly confident and we think we deserve the spot. Um, the past few games that we've had against G2, they were also super close, so we've never like felt that we were second. We always felt like we are the winner of hearts at least. Um, and so I'm just glad that we could prove like all the haters wrong and that we finally get to manage to beat G2 in the end. Speaking of this sort of rivalry with G2, it's such a similar storyline over in NA with Shopify Rebellion and Cloud9. Actually very similar, right? Especially because Shopify just recently beat Cloud9 uh, on a map while you ladies actually <laughs> won an entire series. So how has it been with the prep? Are you guys trying to specifically prep for G2 or is this just a free for all? You're just playing optimally versus anyone? No, we just uh, do like we prep track and play like we play against anyone else really. I think once we join the server we like blend out the names like automatically we don't even say like we don't even call out the Indian names. We say oh breaches there blah blah the blah and we names. like the agent names. Yeah okay. we just treat it like just like any other match really we are in our own hats about it. We play our own game. We don't even look like before had like we don't like we barely watch their matches before like adjust our game plan like related to anything they do. It's really we play our game, we want to set momentum, we want to show them that we have the upper hand and we want them to fixate on our game and like switch up their strats depending on us. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Uh, you know, when it comes to Guild, you guys have single-handedly somehow managed to recruit the best duelist from every other team in Europe. You, all of you can, you can just run a five duelist comp, I feel like at this point, and True. get you on the chamber, Roxy, and it's like GG. Um, but how do you kind of get the other girls comfortable? Because they have to play off role. There's only so many duelists on the team. And for you, Smurfette, um, how do you guys choose like who plays the duelist agents on what map? Uh, I think we already decided I'm the main duelist of the team, uh, but we switched uh, like uh, me on like raise like to chamber because I'm like more comfortable with chamber with an up. And then, I mean, I'm the main duelist, and Ness says she doesn't want to play anything else but smoker because she wants to get used to it. Because if she plays chamber, then she's gonna feel like she's not gonna feel like useful on smoker. She's gonna forget stuff and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, I think in general our team finds it important that everybody gets to play or can play any role because in the end it helps you like in a in a way of knowing what the opposite roles can do and like find out their timings, find out what their abilities can actually do and stuff. So it's just important like to increase your own gameplay by learning other agents and be fully able to be like flexible because it will help you in the future. It will help you like in every kind of scenario. So like for all of us, it's just important that you can just switch and be able to flex. Okay. My question is, we're going to veer off a little bit from the gameplay. I'm going to ask about your IGL, Claudia, okay? Yes. Because <laughs> back in the day, she used to have this superpower where she could just remember every single person's birthday that she <laughs> ran into. She's still is the she same. still doing <laughs> this? She's still the same. How, oh my she God. is still doing 
that like as soon as she meets someone she's like when's your birthday and they tell her she's like oh you're like a Sagittarius and something and she's like instantly like yeah. going on she knows everything Insane. about their personality instantly <laughs> and then she's like oh yeah you're compatible with XYZ and then she's like <laughs> wait is she, is she like setting you guys up is she playing Cupid with your yeah, birthday something she does that like I'm just like talking to someone she's like oh by the way she's like your love match and I was like <laughs> yeah, she's like okay, trading good that to know. <laughs> that is too funny. Okay, so a uh, second part to this question. It sounds like you guys have a lot of good camaraderie, a lot of good team, uh, you know, uh, synergy together, but this is the first land for some of you guys. Is there anything you're doing outside of the server to kind of keep the confidence up with you uh, and just keep that team morale to a, as high as you can? Um, no, I don't think we're doing anything special. I think the only thing we're we focusing we, we, on the game. Yeah, eh? we just yeah. focus on the game at all times. I keep telling my teammates, okay, this like playing on stage is basically just like streaming, but with a live audience. Like, okay, you can hear like their reactions in the background, so you should like treat it as streaming because all of us are streaming like in their free time. Um, just treat it as a live audience. There's, I mean, there's a camera, but you don't see yourself, so it's just like. Just don't let it get into your head, I guess. Well, get some bat chest in the crowd yeah. and like really play into it. Um, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck in the tournament. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys.
Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Valorant Game Changers Championship here in Berlin as we get ready for this matchup. And uh, folks, just again, you know, still waiting uh, on a few of the uh, issues on the stage to be resolved. We thank you so much for your patience and obviously a massive shout out to our entire, you know, uh, comp ops and administrative teams and everyone back there who is working, uh, you know, tirelessly to make sure that we can get this thing rolling. So bear with us for a little, about, a little bit while longer as we uh, continue to discuss this series, you know, and, in a macro picture, of course, I'm Golden Boy alongside with Mimi as well as Ender. And, and, and let, let's discuss, you know, X10, who are currently down. If you are just joining us, X10 is down in this series. Shopify Rebellion managed to come back in overtime on Haven. 16-14, that was the Rebellion's map. But now we look for, or sorry, uh, that was uh, X10's map. But now Correct. we look forward to Pearl, which is going to be Shopify's map here. What is the feasible path to victory here for X10? Because these next two maps, Ender, are not going to be easy for XN Sapphire. I think at the end of the day, uh, Pearl almost always comes down to how well the teams can fight and battle around for mid control. And a lot of times on attack, that will mean sort of playing to break like early chamber trip wires if yes. you're going for a little bit of a slower setup or, you know, those quick art plays if you have, you know, the fade rays into the com uh, conversation, these sorts of things. So I think for X10, who haven't played a ton of games professionally on this, they really need to have that figured out. Otherwise, Shopify Rebellion will hold down that area and make the right decisions like yeah. they've proven they can. And I think in a way that is an advantage. Shopify has played this map a lot. They're very good at it, but there's a lot of tape out there. And uh, for the side of X10, they haven't in quite a while. They've had a lot of time to make big changes to how they True. do want to play here. Uh, I think the main thing for me would be trying to strike a balance between the aggression and the overheat. Because it felt like they had that at first on Haven, where they were making these aggressive plays. Yes. They were getting the really pivotal openers that this team really does rely on, particularly with Ginny's style of calling, where she loves playing really, really slow on the attack, taking in all the information, getting that opener and going off of it. You need that opening kill to come through, but you can't be over pushing it, over committing it. So a lot of that onus, I think, falls on Muffin and Baby TZ in yeah. those opening engagements to not get shut down. You need to have the awareness of when to sort of hit the brakes, because I think we saw that on, on Haven, especially on their defensive side, when they would go for like the multi-flank, sort of like pushing down yes, C long. Yes. They would run into a player, and then you have the option to sort of hold and and commit to t uh, holding onto that space you've taken, or zooming forward on the flank. And I think it's really important to have the patience to wait for your, the opposing team to actually commit onto a site take on the opposite side before you go for that overheat, uh, you know, double flank, which is something that you do a lot on Pearl because it's such a wide open map. You know, when you're playing for early A main or B long control, you will generally have multiple yeah. players that look to, to go for the flanks. I think also playing to their composition strengths is going to be really important. If they stick by this Astro Viper on their defensive side, they have to be really well set up in how they're playing this stall because the strength of this composition is the stall it provides. They struggled with retakes on Haven. I think they could be difficult here again, uh, especially with the way that Shopify likes to play. They they go on site in a lot of these rounds and have a very heavy kind of like early fight in the post. And then they'll always have an Astro player in the late round to be able to close things out. So being able to stall out, get those openers for extent is going to be quite important. Yeah. And I, I have noticed with a lot of these teams here, like they're really sticking to their guns, right? When you look at, you know, what they previously played on these maps, like there aren't that many adjustments that are being made. Like seeing KP, for example, when she busted out the uh, the, the breach in, in sure. map one, that was different, right? They were playing the Sage before and now they used the breach. And we had obviously the, the, the breach fan over here break nice. everything down for us about why that agent pick was so vital. But I would like maybe to see X10 change it up a little bit. Maybe give them a, uh, you know that they were going to go to Pearl. It didn't get banned, so you knew you were going to go there. Maybe there's going to be something different. If there is, what could that be potentially? Uh, it's hard to say because there, there are uh, things you can throw into the mix, whether it's like Guild changing things up in terms of the Sentinel, right? The the Killjoy was put into play. I think Cypher can have a, a place on a map like this. But overall, when I look at the way that X10 have been playing, I don't think they deviate uh, super far away from the meta. They play comps that are maybe a little bit easier to execute, uh, uh, except for Haven, I think. Haven is, is sort of that odd man yeah. out Fair. in there. But I do think that at the end of the day, the comps are going to look fairly similar here That's for right. X10 in, in a similar way to how their breeze hasn't changed a whole lot. And you have the dedicated smoke scroll, and then all the other agents look fairly similar across the maps.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would agree with with that one. I think as well for for thinking of this one from the Shopify side of things. I think for them they're probably feeling really confident off of making that comeback happen, uh, particularly for KP after having a great second half, really getting on top of the calling. Um, coming into Pearl now, I'm sure they are feeling fantastic, even though it is a bit longer until they get into that game uh, and already have a fantastic idea of how they like to play that map, sticking to their guns, just staying focused. I, I think this is their map to win. All right. Listen here, folks. Okay. Okay, we, listen. We, we've been serious. We've been serious this whole time. But the time it's been to be a little serious, too much serious. it's done. It's time for some whimsy. All right, because while Ooh. this uh, tech pause has been happening on the stage, uh, our players have been having some fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. You've got a game to play. Oh, yeah, I feel that. I've been, I've been, I've been jet lagged to high hell, so I totally feel that Is one. Is that Mel? I think that was Mel the Observer as well. I think we have multiple Mel's Oh here. my gosh, yeah. I knew she was coming to Berlin, that's fun. Of course, you gotta give the love to Salt right there, a little head pat. I mean, KP is oh. popping KP's off. KP's just balling oh, on the, the stage. Oh, oh. oh, oh the dog! Oh, the dog! Oh, oh, oh we never see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love like the absolute dichotomy between literally falling asleep in your seat and then the second later playing basketball. I don't know why that's dunking. so funny to me. I just know me. chat was spamming resident sleeper the whole time and then to kind of come in with that was absolutely perfect. I, I want to imagine, right? Because we only saw shots from Shopify's side. I imagine all five X10 players are just deathly serious, staring straight <laughs> into their computer screen, not talking to each other, just like waiting for the moment that they're I mean, ready to just get into it. I think the classic it. is just the secret lab chair, just like, bitch. Uh, like, Chet <laughs> would do this every time at Champions. Oh. Our caster booth was right above the side of the stage that Optic played on. It and during nice. rounds, he would just be lying back like this, just Yo, GB, you got to try out. this. It, this actually chilling. is so relaxing. Wow, it you're is. even further. You're so yeah, far back. back. <laughs> yeah, that's a, if I end up doing it, I know that on my back, You'll I won't be able to up. get back into it. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, we folks, I, I, I'm, don't worry. We're going to be jumping into the action a minute. As soon as we do, I'm literally going to stop the conversation stop the fun and then we're going into the no. matchup uh, no but allowed. i do want to give a massive shout out to all the people who have been coming through uh, and watching the games each and every day here in berlin seriously you guys are all amazing i don't know if they can hear me i think they can hear me over there so mucho gusto love you guys thank you so much for being here with us it has been uh, such a, a fun tournament and, and and honestly i've i've loved every minute of it since this is shout out central i actually want to give a shout out to the comp ops team obviously they're, they're fixing everything right now and trying to get the computer and work order but uh, they let me and Christy have a chance to, to try on the in-ears and, and the, the over the, the headsets that they have on stage to test out the white noise and it's actually really good I know at some tournaments you get like blasted by yeah. white noise and can't really hear anything but I could not hear it at all yeah, I, the I, audio I was, tell so it was crisp. there yeah and that was with like Yinsu trying to scream in the background so you know creating some noise there no it was really really solid yeah that's right well guys if you're just joining us again uh, welcome to Valorant Game Changers Champion here in Berlin as we saw quite the map one Haven which was X10 Sapphire's pick they went up in the half 9-3 but unfortunately the curse struck again and Shopify Rebellion manages to bring it back in overtime 16-14 now we shift our focus over to the underwater city of Pearl where Shopify Rebellion are looking to close this one out 2-0 Ender but I think we might be going into some agents. I'm here. getting a good feeling about this. Oh, what an angle. What an angle. Shout Power out to our Game camera Changers. Team. You gotta love that right there. Uh, that's Ollie, I believe, on that one there. So a shout out Central. I gotta say though, the absolute roller coaster that the last two hours has been for X10. Going up 9-3 in the half, then faltering, losing that multiple overtimes, then losing, and now you just have, are iced. You are iced for 30 oh seconds. My. They have got to come in strong. Ladies and gentlemen, dreams are possible. <laughs> Here comes the Prime Gaming Agent Select as we get ready for this one, Mimi. It's Christmas. We've waited so long to do what, what, what day is it? Um, what day is it? I don't know. <laughs> Smack dab in the middle of November. It's close it's enough. It's Game Changers Game Day. That's what it is, <laughs> GP. Time to change the game. Oh, man. And looking at this, we are going to have the double smoke setup coming through from X10. Muffin back on the neon, which was so incredible. Uh, back on Haven, so eyes on her to get the job done 
for the squad right there. But I've got to say, lots of stall power with X10 starting on the defensive side. But we're mm -hmm. waiting to see what they can do to set up Muffin and, and Baby TZ for early fights. Yeah, the head-to-head -head between the Neon should be huge. But we've waited too long. GB just wants to keep talking. Can you please start the please. game? Please. I got it. I'm going to hit the start game button right now. Let's Deep jump group. over to our casters, who, fun fact, have been standing this entire time. <laughs> it's Potter and Vansilly. <sighs> Definitely a few things that we have to think about. Where are our secret lab chairs? We need that energy, so let's take the energy back here, Christine. Boom. And at the same time, I also want to know, the next time you have to do a podcast, GB, is Pearl really underwater? Because look beyond her of the domes. There's like land and all that stuff as well. Yeah. Should we do a podcast? Uh, maybe. We should start it. No, we should talk about this game. Okay. We're going into the second map. It is Pearl. Thank you so much for all of your patience. X10 versus Shopify Rebellion to give you a little bit of a summary of what happened on the first map. It was chaotic. Might be the same thing on the second map. We had so many OTs on the first one. And now as we look into Pearl, no composition changes from either teams here, Christine. Yeah, same comfort picks coming out from both squads. And you're right, I don't think we're going to see anything different. Polly spoke about it in her interview. They need confidence. They need to play just like they do at home. And right away, some aggression and a beautiful shot to find the opening here for Baby TZ. And that was a knife to set things up to make sure that Baby TZ wasn't going to be able to TP behind the pillar, but a great star indeed for X10. And as they're looking at the compositions too, Shopify Rebellion are looking with the last four remaining to hit towards this A site. What do they have right now? A couple of pots to work with too, but no smokes are running in now already. The smokes have been popped already rather towards the A site, and it's Shopify Rebellion opening it up in this area. Such good utility coming up from both squads. Shopify able to capitalize off that though. A good seize coming out for KP so she can fall back, get into a power position in this Ooh. post. Three, all three members of Defenders coming out here from spawn. This is going to be so annoying to deal with because now you can just waste the time with this gravity well, then go for triple peaks, elite lurk if you want to from Benita. That is for Shopify Rebellion on his pulse plan. But nice sneak fight actually, not deep enough, but we still get two kills coming in from X10. Now it's just going to be KP stuck in the corner. Oh. Jinny runs up. Now on to the defuse. Up to halfway, Benita has to walk Whoa. down. Nice one onto BBTZ. Can she clutch this right now? Jinny has to try to stick it. Oh it's a tap. Benita gets the Red Bull clutch. Huge plays coming out here for Shopify. And you saw the positioning of all four members. Benita was so far back, but as she should, she's got the kit to be able to clutch in these posts. Beautiful job. And I got to say, that entry was so neck and neck. You saw both Prowlers just kind of passing each other. Both fades getting so many pings across the board. But beautiful entries here for Shopify to be able to get into that site and put themselves in this post position. And in the end, we talked about how intense this series is going to be. And nothing was really out of the ordinary in terms of like really brawly or with anything. It's, it looked really clean on how you wanted to retake the site. The shots we're landing to, it's not as scrappy. We're really still on top of our game in the series despite everything that just happened before. This round, BBTZ already forced on to TP, TPing back towards the back of the B site. And we are relentless for Shop of Fire Belly. Nice little flash allows Saunder to get into the back of the B site. Trying to get the spray with the Spectre and finally does so. But Baby TC's just behind, trying to go for the surprise attack. Not going to work. Things are looking better now for especially that Shopify Rebellion to clean things up in the second round. A little bit of a labored spray for Saunder, but it's all good. Her pathing on this map, it is explosive. So absolutely look out for Saunder to be capitalizing off all the info that KP and Lori are both going to be providing her. And she's just... <laughs> You saw Baby TZ going again for that opening, right? On that pistol round, she found that success, finding that beautiful sheriff shot onto things, but business as usual, a clean anti-eco, and you know, that's not something we were able to say every anti-eco coming into this match. That's true, and Lori already won away before getting the KO ultimate, which would be actually huge for them to get, which is why now Shop Rebellion are fighting towards this A site, the A control orb. Now we have the Null Command ready for Laura, who has been an amazing player on this map in previous matches here at the Game Changers as well. Exploding on that KO. Shopify are just completely slowing things down, collecting that orb near this A main area. And usually the defenders have to be wary. Did a chamber get inserted? Is there an Astra lurking? Where's the rat? 
Ooh. But all five members of Shopify have completely regrouped. Baby TZ about to run into three. This is going to be so tough here. And now contact. Ooh. Danol Comanche can't can't she can't be away. TP. But she still gets the headshot to Sunder. Now just looking for some cover oh. behind the pillar, trying to waste the time down. It doesn't work out. No snake bites to slow things down. Muffin, though, has rotated towards the back of the B-Halls as a, as a KO knife. Ashley spots her all the way in the back. But all of that, the KO ult is down. Bonita being such a rat. The timing here is going to be everything. Alyssa has sniffed it out. Left. A couple of whiffs. But this pressure that Bonita's applying should allow Shopify to get into the site here. But the battle ensues towards B. Meanwhile, as Pauly is not allowing Shopify to get a point oh. down, we fight back with Ginny. KP down a low HP. It's a 2v2 as she peeks out. Half of the body was sticking out. Grab the wall towards the ground. Bonita down to 30 Ten HP. Left. 10 seconds left. She has that quick. But the body speaks out from Ginny. And finally, Polly comes out. A slight mistake, finally, as we see in this series, as Ginny was still exposed, but Elise was saved by her teammate. Absolutely. Just the tip of the gun barrel showing and peeking through. And we've seen those moments so oh, many yes. times That's today. That's true. That's true. Oh, man. Just a little sliver, but she's able to capitalize. And you know what? If I'm Shopify, I'm absolutely satisfied with that bonus coming into this yes. one, making it so damn expensive for X10. They're going to have to repurchase everything coming into this one. With this round, everything that they have to repurchase for X10. It's a Guardian, it's a Spectre, a Bulldog, two Bulldogs. So it's not too, not good economy coming in here for X10. But thankfully, we've activated a Viper's Pit from Ginny that covers all the way of Plaza and has a, a heavy control towards both B-Link and Art. Yeah, and Ginny is going to have to be extra disciplined, extra cautious in this area. Just last round, we saw Bonita being that rat, looking for those lurk timings. And Shopify have completely slowed this round down once again. Benita's positioning here is towards that B main, and she's just looking for a sniffer, right? Yeah. Shopify, all four members very much grouped, and look at the forward positionings from the defenders. Last time, Muffin was so rewarded in this position. Exactly. And Muffin get it. The first contact comes out. Oh. Muffin does get that first kill. Really bull, but Sonder runs it down for the trade-off on the two kills. A tough thing to do when all the stars are already placed elsewhere inside the map here for X10 and Shopify Rebellion. Zooming through the A site will get a plant for A main. Zoom, zoom, and look who it is. It's none other than Bonita the boom, boom. on this. <laughs> <laughs> Fast flank. Ginny and Baby TZ, uh, they've got to try to survive, we get some frags, but they're just completely surrounded. Yeah, but the timing is good for X10. They think that they have a good timing, but you're right. Inside the pit from Flowers, now there's only one left. Alyssa with the Bulldog forced to retreat. And that is Shopify Rebellion from so far, like when it comes down to taking sites and taking the fights, as soon as they get kills or whatnot, they are just going to continue to hold that W. Just press the issue. Don't exactly. let go of the gas pedal. The desk was certainly talking about that. This is huge frags for Alyssa. If she's able to survive, get one more. One more ultimate, one more orb closer to the ultimate. Not too shabby, all things considered, if you're X10. And she is going to be able to survive. Yeah. Made the round expensive. Absolutely. Hero Vandal as well coming into this one. And as I mentioned, two away from the ultimate, one away from the tour de force for baby TZ. I, look, it's going to be a scrappy buy, but maybe three members of X10 can push forward, get the orb for baby TZ, and make this round as interesting as possible. Yeah, I'm sorry, Christina. My Dota Foss is being put on you right now, trying to get the accent <laughs> like mine. It's fun to say. It's fun to say. What can I do? What can I say? But we uh, yeah. An aggressive push from X10 all the way up towards the B site. They go for the Prowler. Very aggressive play from X10. Yeah, I think Baby TZ's trying to catch up quick to try to grab the orb. A fast blink is going to be in action, but Shopify, it's a free site. They're already in. Huge control as well. Once again, Sonar gets inside of the dugout. And he's trying to push back towards spawn with support coming out from Flowerful. And all we're trying to do right now, at least, is to try to leverage this Vandal that's in the hands of Alyssa. So a triple fight to come through. And there is oh. that perfect trade, allowing also the Headhunter to do some work, also salvaging an extra weapon for this retake attempt for X10. KP in position at church. Will get the easy headshot as, man, these bodies are dropping from both ends. KP, although being death by the Nightfall, finally gets dropped. And it's up to a 1v1. Tap onto the spike going between the lanes. But now that clock is ticking, you have to try to go for it. And Sonder goes for the overdrive. 
to add insult to injury and Shopify Rebellion are up at four. Better safe than sorry. Sonder absolutely still wanted to utilize the speed and that speed yes. definitely pays off for a player like Sonder. She's just so quick with her reactions. I, I was terrified when she <laughs> came out of that wall and the Ash was on the other side of things, but it's Sonder and she's good for it. And uh, things got dicey. That was actually a pretty decent Retake attempt coming out from X10, all things considered. We talked about the lesser weaponry. That quick flank coming through and taking care of Benita on the extremities to make this post actually a retake possibility was everything for X10. And what a huge opening. Neon on neon violence. And Alyssa tries to fight back. It works out. Perfect trains continues. Can Polly get this next one? Will not. Two versus two as apologies. That knife holes from KP on that previous round. So it was available for Alyssa to try to slow things down towards Art, but to use her weapons instead for the trades. And look the positioning that Benita's able to take. So much distractions happening down in that mid -air Art area. Yes. Benny has all the control. Her teammate in Lori will be catching up. No sound cues to be heard. And both defenders fully buying into this A hit. This time is going to start ticking away pretty quick here. Especially this wall coming up. This might be the cue now for X10. As soon as they realize the spike is planning, just start booking it back towards the A side. And thankfully here is that Baby TZ is still alive. That trademark is still available in that, that B link. And you're so terrified if you're X10. You've got to clear every corner, every angle as you're trying to make your way and make space back into the site here. That Astral Wall putting an extra spanner in the works and the corner. Benita so ready. Unfortunately, the cannon of that Dota Falls is way too long. Easy kills on the last two. And Shopify Rebellion, we're starting to see them take control of the first half of their map pick. The seesawing, the defaulting, working so well. And we've heard in multiple interviews Shopify talking about KP's strengths in those mid rounds. Yeah. All the information that her players are able to gather for her, making that perfect mid round call of which side to hit. Nice! And this is one of the strengths of Shopify's is, is, is learning to, to slow it down, right? And yeah, I agree. We haven't seen it as much in NA, but it's great to see that towards the end of the year, especially on land now at the biggest tournament of the year, I, it's looking fluid. It's I looking agree. solid. I agree. And it's a little bit of, of that mix between KP and also Benita, right? If KP is going to call the initial play, Benita's playing that lurk. If she has that timing, she could call the mid round as well, especially if KP falls throughout the action, that they could try to win these situations at potentially a disadvantage, or when again, she's able to cut that rotation across and allow Shopify Rebellion. For X10, this is a round that they will want to invest quite a bit in trying to convert three ultimates online, but the money is an issue. Uh, Baby TZ, she's been able to be good for those openings, especially towards those, that long B area. Yes. If she's able to find an early pick somehow, some way, expect these ultimates to come online for X10. As we're looking at the setup, at least, we could potentially see that battle once again for her to take control towards that long B. But it might be one of those moments is you want to play aggressive because of this low buy. And if it doesn't work out where you gambled and it's the action's not there, you can play the retake with these ultimates. So aggressive, Muffin. Coming through, KP. Counter hot though. That spots a couple of players. Nice a little relay bolt looking for some support. And now looking around the corner, it's not oh being checked. Boy. But somehow Muffin still gets two kills with the overdrive. <laughs> KP, yes, is able to answer back. And there you go, she even shakes her head on that one. Doesn't know how she couldn't get that kill on that aggressive Muffin. And now it's a two versus two. Still very doable for X10. Almost running out of mouse pad space for <laughs> sure is KP. But those secret lab cha the tables are so long. At least they were able to rendezvous now. The spike has come up and met up with KP. They're making so much noise though here, Vans. Yep. A lot of sound cues, both defenders together. Oof. And it oh, works out for the trade. Fireful with the spray transfer to win that duel. And you love to see it. Just bait your teammate. Yep. Bait him. Tell KP to get out there. I got you. <laughs> I'm good for it. And she's able to convert. Uh, beautiful stuff. And that could have been pretty deadly. Uh, I mean, because there was just so much utility, so much uh, noise that yeah. X10 already made that pre-rotate happen.
So good on Shopify for being able to convert that one, but man, was it hectic. And KP's <laughs> feeling it. She's feeling the pressure. Oh, yeah. But you still salvaged the round. You still get the, the win. It's 6 to 1 for Shopify Rebellion. A lot of economies rolling in finally for X10 as they're changing the pace, pushing out towards Art, forcing out an early null command from Lori. But the player advantage still comes in for X10, and they fall back to play that player's advantage. And this is a beautiful start for X10. Finally able to have some breathing room. They've got all the advantages. Perfect fallback as well. No trade in sight. And Shopify, they're forced to just completely slow it down. Well, not so much force. We've seen that they're A-OK -okay with yeah. being put in this position. Next 10 so far from that first series have those moments where they're playing very aggressive. So cutting that noise, trying to see if X10 wants to re-aggress down towards Plaza could get punished. KP meanwhile did pick up an orb though. So they have a nightfall ready for uh, a very heavy hit despite the disadvantage of players that they have. It seems to be maybe to work towards this mid. Maybe yeah, towards spawn as well. They want to try to draw one of those A defenders, make them come back oh. towards this A so that Benita is able to find a timing. But baby TZ is so good for it. Either way, though, Benita, she's got to take a risk. And and she's the rewarded. Risk works for that. But another one's inside the dugout. Oh. Polly trades back. But the Nightfall then comes in from the defender, spawning the last two already inside the site. Noise fully cut. That allows Polly to get the kill, but Lori's going to have to go in a clutch. She can't hear anything. She doesn't know. But she sees oh! the first and second kill. The plant to come down, forcing it on the ground. No push coming out from BBTZ. Only has an off to work with. A flash to peek out. Pick it up a second weapon with 12 bullets oh! left. But the headshot comes in for BBTZ. And X10 managed to get the round. So close. Lori always in these close neck and neck cl clutch scenarios. Scenarios that she probably is just so difficult to win, one versus three, but she makes <laughs> it so close every time that I'm a believer. Oh yeah. But X10, Baby TZ, able to convert that one, and that took everything out of X10 to be able to do. I agree. And we mentioned just before Lori how she pops off Last on this map, standing. but three versus one, definitely Spot doable. She's done it with eight. a Sheriff. On like a 4K previously. The last time they played this map on Pearl. But yeah, definitely a round that was won for X10, but another once again expensive round that comes out of X10 for that victory. So you have a Bulldog, small shields for a player. What can he do with this? She's still smiling. She's still hyped. That's true. I love to see that. Saunder very aggressive once again, and she's got four teammates right behind her. This looks like they want to commit. That's off a nightfall from KP to answer back nice from the slow. previous one. Yes, it actually did deafen one player towards Church, and that's Polly and even Alyssa towards the back. Beautiful decay or from the haunt as well. And that's just going to slow things back just because we countered just enough with the smoke coming out from Yeah, and there was Pauly. just so much counter utility that Benita's been able to slip past. You can see her teammates are being very patient. Now the hit is coming. And a counter flank is about to come out from the A link. Can it be fast enough, Alyssa? So many Jeez. players, so many bodies, and the timing doesn't work out. Plant's about to come through, but Ginny now gives her position away. Just trying to get KP down, trying to push KP out Double of position, swing. and she's going to die. Great patience as well from Ginny. And a double swing doesn't work out, but this is going to be definitely the cue to just try to save your weapons because you have invested that operator into this round as well. Yeah, but don't want it to go oh. haunting, and she's good for the shot. That stings Look if you're Ginny, unable to survive off that one. Baby TZ, uh, this is so much pressure is on her way. What yes. At least nobody flanking. She's got a trip behind her, so maybe she'll be able to survive. But what a round coming out here for Shopify. And they were A-OK -okay with all that trading of utility. Nobody was able to get any space, get any ground, but it was all a distraction. You saw that because so much was going on in that main corridor, Bonita again slipping past everything. Exactly. Finding that timing and her teammates just absolutely reacting so fast off her opening here in the site. That's right. In the end, so far from what I'm currently seeing from X10 is that they're able to fight and trade perfectly, but Benita keeps slipping through the, the, the line of defense from X10 every single time, and that's been a huge different ma uh, difference maker for this Shopify Rebellion team. How does X10 stop this? They have to start figuring that out. They have to start identifying where Benita is currently lurking. Another quasi buy scenario. Ginny, thankfully, is going to be able to drop that Viper's Pit. 
hopefully buy some time. And again, in the back of my mind, as you at in the back of Ginny's mind rather, she is absolutely thinking about Bonita on that quick lurk. Yeah. Could be the back of your mind as well. Christine, you've been in IGL in the past, so <laughs> you probably have the same thoughts as Ginny, but for Shaw from Rebellion. So aggressive. The beautiful wall sort of flashes, the double push in the back. This is just standard stuff for the take towards the B site. And it works out perfectly when all the pistols have dropped. Nothing they can really do here as BBTZ tries to make some sort of effort. A flash allows Sonder to flank from behind. And that's BBTZ that will not be able to salvage or save that operator. Sonder gets the execution. And Shop for Rebellion take the lead by six. Completely controlling the pace of this game so far, Shopify. Uh, they haven't really struggled much, especially in the mid rounds, and they look to be in full control. X10, they got to be able to get a couple more rounds on the board here, and this is it. Baby TZ with that Tour de Force. This is a healthy, healthy purchase. I'd like to see a little bit something different. You know, Baby TZ did push down that long B again, maybe with some help this time around. Neon inserted into the cubby, but baby TZ, she's all alone. With the ult, trying to see if a second one was gonna ping out, but to no avail. Wasted one bullet off that prowler. Now the null command being picked up by Laura as they execute it to be. Yeah, baby TZ, no gun to be had, and Saunders just been so aggressive. She's gonna take over this back hall once again. Waiting for her teammate. Good discipline. The spike should get down. Power positions for Shopify. And we're just waiting for that null command to finish so that BBTZ could get that tool to falls back out. It works for the first and even the second kill. We retake control of the back B halls for X10. Oh. But the long range Jeez. play is being played. Alyssa getting the headshot onto Sonder. Firefall on the top of control. Poison orb, wall coming out, everything. As we're trying to get the confuse in, it's at least a halfway. But it seems as though it might not be doable here. Larval looking for the playmaker. Gets the hash out of the baby TZ. But finally, we get the defuse out for X10. Last Beautiful stuff for X10. Half. A little bit lucky to be alive there. Sonder, so many <laughs> targets for her to choose, right? Yeah. I mean, that trigger discipline, you see the Viper walking past. Do I go past her or not? Unfortunate for Sonder, but fortunate turn of events here for Shop of Art for X10 side of things, at least to stop the bleeding here. Do we get a fourth on the board here, Vans? I'm hoping it's going to be the case. I mean, BBTZ, she's definitely hitting those shots with that Dota False and doing a great job holding towards this B side. So it comes down to this control that you want to try to get towards the A orb because you maybe have this nightfall that KP maybe want to inch towards this mid that they did before as well. Really like the pressure that Saunders just applied onto Ginny there, tanking that molly, but being okay with it, taking care of that chamber trip. Now Ginny is going to be paranoid the hey, entire so round. Here. Where is Bonita lurking? Ooh. And he tried to push back out from the nightfall on mid. X10 trying to take control of long. Jeez, what? But Bonita is just doing such a great job. Polly answering back. Head on a swivel for two kills, making it potentially salvageable for X10. Ginny looking for her timing. As the smoke dissipates, nobody's in sight. She's waiting a little bit. Baby TZ's right on her heels. Not a lot of utility to work with here at all. They're going to want to try to tap the spike and draw out one of these players. Well. Ginny now spotted. We're just looking for the trade play. The seize, but Larval still gets four kills into the round. Winning that round and saving it for Shopify Rebellion. I Put saw a world, Vans. I saw a world <laughs> where that flick coming out for Ginny was good for it. But thankfully for Shopify, Flowerful comes through strong. And that's Shopify dominating this first half. Finally, a strong start here in the first half here for Shopify. Yeah, and I could see it right now from Shopify Rebellion hitting out towards those sides, playing the back sides a little bit more passively, trying to stop Benita on the flanks. But is it too little too late? At least in wrestling, we have the people's elbow, but for in Valorant, we got the people's voice. Let's say to the desk with Golden Boy. <laughs> Damn it. I love you, man, silly. I really do. Uh, all right, well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's break this down. Because, uh, look, not to 
be that guy, but it, this is this is simply just not the way that we saw this going with the composition that X10 uh, put into place here. Sure, but hey, it's a 9-3 again, That's true. so they can spin it straight around. I mean, honestly, the, the more I look at how these two teams match up, it feels like there is just a, a really rough stylistic mismatch, I think, for X10, yeah. especially when it's uh, Shopify on the attack, because Shopify, the way they play out so many of the rounds is this slow, very solid default style, and X10 just keep running after them. And we had a round that really exemplified that, where it is just this aggression out of XN. We saw it on Haven, we see it again here. Uh, they're putting all their eggs in the basket of uh, Muffin pushing forward, going for a crazy play. And as you can see in this one, it, it works. She gets two kills, KP whiffs a little bit, and she's able to get away with it. But the thing is that Shopify was here. They had four players ready yeah. to hold for this aggression. The only utility supporting Muffin in those pushes is just fade utility. You don't have a breach, you don't have anything else uh, to follow it up. And on top of that, like you were saying, GB, this is a star composition with the two controllers, it doesn't feel like they're playing to the strength. It's just a wild play. They're pushing 3A main, 2B main. It was a north side crunch trying to go for it. And now as we look into the second half, I feel like we have to talk about Saunders. She's been having such a good map yep. already. And on the defensive side, uh, she's a lot more reserved, but still finds a lot of value on that Neon. Yeah, definitely puts herself in positions, especially Neon takes a lot of fights around mid. You'll also see maybe some B-long pushes as well coming into play. Things that Muffin was trying to go for on the opposite side, but Muffin could only find four kills. That's Sonder rough. now has to find way more than that. And I think I've been more impressed thus far by the way that Shopify has been putting investment in supporting Sonder. Muffin is a great player, but on this map, it didn't feel like she had the tools to succeed. Yeah, it's, it, it is rough when your star player simply is not outputting the way that you would want it to be. And that's not uh, necessarily on Muffin. I think it's just on the way that they are approaching this, as we have highlighted already. This is very clearly an issue that they're going to need to try and sort through. But hey, stranger things have happened. It's 9-3. Let's send it back to the future AEW Tag Team Champions of the World. It's Potter and Ben Silly. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I just always love the comments that come out from Mimi right after. But thank you so much, oh. Jimmy, Mimi, and Ender. As yes, the second half, it is definitely a very slow start for X10. How did they come back out of this? Yeah, it's it's a slow start, but man, Saunders having fun. Look at that stat. We gotta 80 stop her. Percent success rate. X10, they've got a lot to do here to slow her down. Muffin has been very active on the defense. Now she's. Gonna be able to be a little bit more free. Prowler catches Lori. At least pushes the defense back towards the little drop by Vines. As more Prowlers are looking for information on the other end. And through that smoke, we have regained control of Shopify Rebellion. That's just utility being used. Now it's time to go for trades. Haunt to break the crosshair placement. Muffin gets the first blood onto Saunder. Oh, we no. wanted to stop her, we finally did. As this frenzy continues to go to work right now for X10. Only two left to go where KP has to fall back and is now getting met here by Flowerful towards Flowers. Gets seized a little bit, and that's gonna certainly slow down this retake. Baby TZ on this quick flank, cosplaying as Benita here. Uh -oh. Maybe maybe not, maybe not, because Benina was landing those shots. She gets punished oh, for that, no! too. Now we're pushing back towards the church, but there's still too many players available for X10 inside the site. KP is going to have to come out clutch. Ten bullets in the chamber. Ooh, oh my god, all these right clicks. Close range, looking for the ace. Oh, oh but the right click connected for a bit. Ginny survives with only 18 HP as X10 salvaged the pistol round. That, that was incredible. What an attempt coming out here for KP. Those are NTs in the chat, 100%. Agreed. What a round. I, just slipping past once again. And the power of the frenzy man, Muffin, able to convert that opening, just beelining it into the site, completely catching Benita off guard. What? How many HP? Where are you? Alyssa, or how much HP or uh, BBTZ had on top of that staircase? That was a long range. Was say, was like so so oh my god! That was I don't know. So far away. But nonetheless, Where this is going to be a gun round coming in for X10. They have specters across the board. This time, Shopify not forcing through in the advantage by a long shot. So a bit conservative coming into this one. Two yeah. shorties though. And Art still seems to be the name of the game here for X10. Oh as no! Though the crossfire with the pistols are still too strong. Now here comes once again the boomstick inside. As Ginny answers back in. A frenzy, a shorty, 
Spike down, two flanking, and X10 has not, like, there's not a lot of time to work with. There's a minute, yeah, but they still have to salvage the spike. And Ginny's walking into a trap. Oh, remaining. boy. Good All luck. three members of Shopify just converging on that area. Polly at least has a spike on her back. Completely clear is a site. She doesn't know it, though. She's still got to clear all her corners. Full kit on her back, though. Th this is a doable post. Time will be ticking away, but all three members left. of Shopify are so grouped here. Yeah. Nothing more I could do here but to play towards the back of the site. Stars to try to get some smokes in. One more sp star to go there she could use for a grab well. But look how quickly Shopify Rebellion are moving inside the site. This might not give enough time here for X10 to actually go for at least a rotate across. There goes the first gravity well, and she has to try to sneak across. And that's just a nightfall, the nightmare for Polly, who does not get the kill onto KP. Oh, and that's punishing. That's going to burn for X10 here. Shopify Rebellion had barely anything coming into this round, but that's kind of been the telltale sign for Shopify. These shotguns, whenever Shopify is wielding them, they are so deadly. Whether it's Bonita, whether it's Lori or KP, yeah. these shotguns, they just... And it makes sense. They're always talking about having fun in the server. <laughs> How much more fun can you have jumping around, hop, skip, jumping with a shotty? <laughs> and especially when we saw the, the warm-up that we had from uh, the halftime of Haven, we were already trying to warm up with Odin's and Shorty's, so maybe that's why <laughs> it came into fruition Finally, into that round number 14 previously on Pearl right now. And speaking of, in the moment, it is going to be an eco round for X10. The chances are of them trying to come back in this game is slowly escaping them. As this might be a round that they lose, the next gun round is going to be the most important one to try to start that comeback. But Shopify Rebellion, they have full control of the attack, defense, I don't know what they could do for X10. Hopefully, try to get some good shots, some feel good headshots coming into this round. They're gonna need that sort of confidence going into the next gun round, potentially the last one of this entire series. What a flank for Muffin. Using your duelist to go for the lurk. That it opens up, a, oh my God, the A side for a bit until Benita's up there on the top of the dugout. And that's just a solid hold coming in for Shopify Rebellion. But again, you had lower weaponry. Hopefully that kill that you had on KP could have done something for that hero rifle. But Shopify Rebellion, they have control of this uh, of these sites. Yeah, it seems like Shopify have a really good grasp of that uh, choke point over towards that A site. I mean, and it's where X10 just keep going, right? Time yeah. and time again. It seems like Muffin, that is her confidence part of the map, but it's just at this point going into a blender. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to ask you, Chrissy, because you're looking at this composition from X10 where they're not using any flashes, or you're just focusing so much on this mid control towards art all the time. I think X10, they just got to slow it down, really utilize this Viper, start to let the paranoia creep into Shopify. Let's cut off half of the map, and you can see that the Viper wall is there at B, but without any B main control, this Viper wall doesn't really do much. Yeah. A little bit of a spray from Sonder through the Poison Orb as we had that lineup coming out from Ginny, so they could at least try to see if that trap is there from that chamber, but she comes out of it with 48 HP. Pushing Flowerful off this angle from Baby TZ and X10 is going to be so crucial to be able to capitalize off this pressure of the Viper Wall. Polly gets spotted on holding the flank. Here's the issue here. No knife to force a TP out, so Flowerful gets the pick. Sonder trying to support back, going with the walls to fall back, and they play that those numbers. That was perfect. Meanwhile, though, for X10, they did notice that there was two players flanking from Shopify. Yeah, but right now, Polly is a bit terrified. She saw the two, and she's got to hold back. Power in numbers is Shopify. Bonita pausing for just a second to let Lori catch up. This duel is going to be so huge here for Polly. Oh, they decide to fall back. I like this. Exactly. They have everything contained, right? The two players are left. blocking everybody towards shop. You flank from long A back into the the, uh, the B shop. So you have three players stacked inside the site. Play the time. But now we force out the Viper's oh pit. Nice kill from Sonder. So the pit's going to go back down. But Benita's still holding it. Cosmic Divide to try to divide the B site so we can retake for shop of our rebellion. But we don't clear the back of the B halls. Oh boy. Shorty from Fireful onto Polly. 
as they now take series point. Get shorties on everyone for this last <laughs> round. It's the only way to secure it if you're Shopify. Everyone needs a shorty in their hands as their secondary. Look at the money on X10. It is completely deflated. Muffin's got a bit more to work with. Maybe she can pass over uh, a weapon, but this is it. They've got to pour everything into this last, and they don't have much to work with. Yeah. Five seconds left into this round. You talked about it, the economy is so low for X10. I think we might put all of our eggs into one basket. Four players now pushing out towards the A orb to try to move quickly. Overdrive, as you hear, coming out now from Muffin, putting the wall up, but here comes the counter. Nice seize on the ground, a smoke to come up. They still have a star onto the ground if Benito wants to throw a concuss. That said, Lori sprays through, and that's Muffin already to fall. So we regress back up towards Ooh. mid. Ginny gets the headshot to Benita. A trade attempt denied. Sonder just getting taken out as well. That's so huge for X10. Now Lori feels like she has to force the issue. Spots one. Oh, they're just getting wiped out. This is a huge round for X10. How punishing they've been. It's all down to just Flowerful. She's got the operator. You know, we've been talking about SR being in just control the whole time, but she's definitely going to want to save this. Yeah. If I'm X10, I'm I'm hunting. And even for Ginny, those two kills were crucial there. Flowerful holding all the way back towards this B halls in the back of the site. We'd like to go for that hunt if we could, but now you're you have to force every single round, try to bring it to OT. Losing any guns here might also be a detriment to the economy later on into the rounds. Yeah, and that's such a good point. I gotta I gotta backtrack. I'll backpedal a little bit. <laughs> they can't they can't chase. Come on. I got you. Christine. Their money's too you. low. <laughs> They've got to play this one out. They've got a lot of rounds that they have to claw their way back to bring this one into OT. So thinking of the long game is X10. They want to save up some of that economy. Flowerful will be able to take this operator into the next. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit wonky because X10, I'm not sure if they'll be able to just perfectly uh, replicate that, right? You yeah. saw Muffin going into the site. Dry got stuck in that grab it as well. Didn't really get much value. And a bit of luck coming through here for Ginny was exactly. able to just completely turn things around. But Maybe another added piece of layer of utility for Muffin to be a little bit more successful on those entries because right now Shopify are able to stop it at its tracks. Yeah, you needed some definitely some heroic plays from Ginny, especially when she had a Spectre against two players with rifles. But what has been, what seems to have been successful here for X10 is getting like Ginny on that lurk, Muffin on that lurk, playing very uh, a very much similar style than Benita did on the attack while the other ones are just grouped up to do some heavy pressure. I think it's pretty much the similar game plan as we're currently seeing from X10. But they have seven rounds that they need to try to bring this back into overtime. Doable in a map like Pearl. Face your fear. As we have the Nightfall coming out now from X10 into this A site. Muffin looking to find that space. Oh. Inside the orb of the smoke Spike does manage to get the kill, but the spike falls. Polly answers back as the player advantage goes back in favor of X10. So oh. much damage, Saunder chipping away at Polly there. But Jin has been here the whole time, and she's not gonna let Benita do it to her again. Takes her out, Saunder in a one versus three. Has walked out, just got spotted. Now she can relay bolt, but nice pre fired shots coming in from Polly. Good timing, lands a bullet in the skull of Saunder. And X10, they're able to survive another round, and also with three players to make sure that they're. Bye continues to stay healthy. And that was such a good timing coming out here for Polly to be that patient, be that disciplined, and really be aware of when to start inching forward. As soon as Muffin got that contact towards that A corridor, that's when uh, Polly starts inching forward, right? And she gets completely rewarded for it, catching Flowerful off guard. And that's such a huge impact frag coming through here for X10. Broken by Shopify. X10 have finally done enough at least to have some hope at the uh, at the end of the tunnel in the second half, right? Yeah. I mean, we still got a long ways to go, but this is how it begins. So KP threw an early haunt towards A long, but the signature move here from X10 is that it's gonna be a slow start and not too much utility being used at the very beginning. They're just trying to creep through to get a kill. And that's one of those moments with a duel comes in the upper hand. Muffin starting to find the her groove here on the attacker half to win that duel against Flowerful. But this was indeed a 
mix buy coming out from Shop of Fire Belly and trying to get their economy right. And a new look coming out here for X10, much more controlled. Obviously, they understand that Shopify have lesser weaponry, but I like the look coming out, re-aggressing oh. and falling back. That was so close for Lori. Forced to fall back now as the second shot whisks by Muffin. Big flash coming through, and the overdrive just to try to get Sonder behind screens. Long range now with a dink on the first relay bolt. We're trying to answer back. Double smokes onto the left. ground, just trying to spray through. Here's the issue. There's no flashes coming out on the attacks so they're trying to come out of these smokes. It's going to be so dangerous. And we're just shocking and shocking trying to land these shots. That refreshes on that kill. Wow. Here's another one. And the fourth looking for the ace. And Shady's going to get it to seal the deal for Shopify Rebellion. Winning that map 13 to 6. And what a perfect way to just close it out in map 2. Do not let the comeback happen. Don't let any sort of weird shenanigans with this fake comeback happen. It's Saunder to finally push it over the edge and get her ace. That was crazy. And <laughs> there was just so much spamming going through those double smokes. <laughs> we just wanted to commit so much here for X10 to at least try to pierce through that barrier of the orbs. Yes, looks of disappointment, but I think for X10, you should definitely still be able to keep your head high. You've proved some doubters you prove to some haters that you have what it takes to get deep into the brackets of this tournament of the VCT Game Changers Championship. And I'd be proud if I was an X10 fan. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with you. I, a little bit unfortunate that especially in the second map, they didn't really get to get things going and start utilizing that the comp that they had, that double controller at the desk talked about it. They wanted to slow things down, right? And you saw towards the end of that second half, they were able to do it. Yeah. But at that point, Shopify just had so much momentum. Saunder just on cloud nine. Well, kind of, on, <laughs> hopefully, on top of cloud yeah, nine yeah. a little bit. But right now, she's feeling good, and she absolutely delivers in the server. Yeah, and if not, that's actually the, the next batch coming up with Lisa. So we're going to have at least some cloud nine going on in uh, in today's stream, in today's schedule. But that's that definitely Shopify Rebellion looking really good. And also, seems like they wanted to play like a a speed run here on the second map. Just yes. trying to catch up on the delay that we got. So a great job here for Shopify Rebellion with the confidence for sure. that they brought into the second map here of Pearl. And I like that, right? Because especially yesterday when I think back of Shopify, nice! there was a bit of, uh, it seemed like disconnect. They had so much game plan, so much prep coming into this event, and you can see it. So many breach plays with KP, with Sonder, but sometimes it seemed a little overcomplicated. So yeah. for them to come in today, keep it simple, stay confident, and run it down at times, especially when you know you have that advantage, and close it out, I like to see that. Yeah, but at least on that uh, on that first map, they had to fight really hard against X10 to yes. come back. They are definitely a team that's able to bring that comeback, but there's definitely some some holes right now in, the, in their plans on Haven that they're definitely going to have to work out on here for Shop of Fire Rebellion if they want to have a chance to make it into the Grand Finals through this lower bracket run. And not only that, it's a potential of them versus even Cloud9 uh, in that next match coming up where they have to play against Guild. So it's not going to be any type of easy uh, journey right now for Shopify. Yeah, it's been a bit of a kryptonite, I got to say, for Shopify's things. But you know what? They're moving on up. Yeah. They're moving on up. So what do you think, Christine, at the end zone MVP between Sonder, Lori, and Flowerful? Uh, no questions asked, Sonder. No Saunder? questions asked, Saunder. Put the votes in. <laughs> you know it. I know it. It's got to be Saunder. Scan that QR code for a QR code. Sorry for it's Saundering time. And with that, we're gonna throw things to a break because we have to continue with the schedule. Cloud Nine and Guild coming up next.